This is a headgum podcast. This is so fucking good. This line, the profanity naturally bleeped for network television, was the inciting incident in the Seinfeld season 5 episode The Non-Fat Yogurt, in which a delicious fat-free treat leads to Jerry Seinfeld's explicit outburst in front of an easily influenced child. Like many Seinfeld episodes, it spoke to a then zeitgeisty mania, the low-fat diet, which doctors and nutritionists of the era pushed as the template for healthy eating. The now discredited dogma led to products like Nabisco's Snack Wells, a devil's food cookie with zero deadly fat, but loads of harmless high-fructose corn syrup, which sold like shitty hotcakes to desperate dieters. But while the non-fat yogurt reflected an eating trend of the moment, A different Seinfeld episode was more prescient about the culinary future. Season 6's The Big Salad, centered on George thanklessly buying Elaine the titular entree-sized portion of Leafy Greens. The notion of a big salad was relatively novel at the time. While salads were common as appetizers or sides, an entire meal of dressed lettuce seemed exotic. So much so that in the Season 6 episode The Soup, not to be confused with the even more famous Season 7 episode The Soup Nazi, When Elaine was exiled from her beloved monk's diner and forced to eat at rival Reggie's, the server was baffled by her pleas for a big salad. But in the 2000s, as Seinfeld yielded to curb your enthusiasm, the low-fat diet yielded to the Atkins diet, as dietary fat was unshackled from belly fat and carbs became enemy number one in the $90 billion weight loss industry. And with the rise of salads for lunch and dinner came trendy new salad-focused restaurants including one founded in Culver City in 2006 by chef Eric Oberholzer. Now with nearly 30 locations across California, Oberholzer's brainchild is just one of many greens-driven concepts targeted at health-conscious eaters who eat for fuel, not fun. Today, salads as mains are standard issue on every restaurant menu in America, and Jerry Seinfeld directed a movie about Pop-Tarts for some reason. And similarly inexplicably, the California Big Salad vendor has pivoted to beefing up its menu with a beefy burger. So in the age of Ozempic, will this fat and carbs loaded hamburger sandwich make diners exclaim, this is so fucking good? This week on Doughboys, we return to Tender Greens for the Tender Greens Burger. Welcome to Doughboys, the podcast about chain restaurants. I'm Nick Weiger, along with my co-host, Sweaty Kruger, the Spoon Man, Mike Mitchell. All right. I don't think of you as a sweaty guy. <laughs> I'm not that sweaty, but I did uh, have uh, uh, when I was when I was younger. I had pit problems. I guess I'm oh, sure, sure you knew how this yeah. was. Yeah, of course. A teenage boy and you got pit problems and you try like any sort of deodorant and it's you're still. And you're worried about pitting okay, too. Hey, Jimmy. Yeah, you're. Uh, Jimmy's yeah, Je- Gemini, Gemini is not taking her normal place next to Mitch. She's just kind of like staring up at me. This is bizarre. <laughs> it's really She's strange. Directly in the center of the yeah. Studio. yeah. Okay, there she goes. There she goes. She knows the show has started. That was like, that was kind out, of like right? maybe she's now she did come over to you recently. She did, yeah. We but that were, was under special circumstances. We, we did an episode back. with Claudio Dardi and and, uh, and John Early. That's right. And she uh, Claudia made a big yelping noise. Yeah, she got spooked by Claudia. That's why she came home. Yeah. It's not because she actually likes me. So thanks, Claudia. Now that Jemmy doesn't seem to like me as much anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, baby. Uh, Sweaty Kruger and the Cream Warrior is a bonus roast to the Creamsman Nick Weiger. Okay, how about that? Carly C. in San Antonio, Texas. Sweaty Kruger is pretty bad. Com. His glove will be flying off his yeah, hand. Right. Because his, his hand is sweaty. <laughs> Too many layers, bitch. <laughs> Take off the sweater, Kruger. <laughs> sweater, how about debtor, bitch? <laughs> We're trying to help you, Freddie. <laughs> uh, you know what I like? I, 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 we both feel like Kruger should be brought back. I'd love to have a funny Kruger come back. He's got to be funny, mm-hmm. though. That's the whole thing. And a funny horror movie can work. That's what, like, you know, mm. just like that's a, I, th- I feel like we kind of, stuff is so super serious now. But like, I don't know, something a little campy, a little, a little fun. I mean, that was part of Megan's success, I think. That was like funny. Yeah. Me, 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 three. Yeah. I'm three. Hey, speaking of horror and speaking mm-hmm. of comedy, 
We got to talk about our buddy Casey Donahue's short, the Taco Bell Woo! Bell Sound song. Oh, wow. Which uh, we both have watched, and you are in. That's Spoiler right. I, I am uh, I partially star in the film. That's correct. <laughs> You get the and at the end, right? I, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I came in and, and did, which for, I literally, I was about 20 minutes late, so kind of similar to today, uh -huh. and uh, <laughs> and shot for about five minutes total, yeah, yeah, uh, and then I was like, did I just suck? And I was like, oh, well, and I was, I was saying this to Casey yeah, yeah, yeah. as I was leaving, but you know what? Phenomenal performance. <laughs> I thought so. You nailed You're it, Mitch. Uh, I'm kidding. But the, the, the movie is the, – the film is great. I watched it for the first time last night. It's great. And it won uh, – it, it won the yeah, competition. What, what award did it win? He hates uh, that we're doing this to him, but guess what? We're doing it. <laughs> Casey wrote and directed this movie. Yeah, I wrote and directed it. It was uh, uh, for this uh, show in L.A. called the Taco Bell Film Festival. No real affiliation <laughs> with Taco Bell whatsoever. Yes. Bunch of people made Taco Bell movies, mm -hmm. um, and I won the. Uh, let me see what they called it. It was the equivalent of like the audience <laughs> award, yeah, basically the viewers the, the, choice the award. Viewers choice, but they called it the uh, uh, mass market appeal award for ov overt audience appeasement. Wow! Wow! <laughs> <laughs> so I'm very proud of that. <laughs> that and rules. the award was a big Taco Bell packet. Yeah, it was a big uh, hot sauce uh, packet. Oh, that's, that's fun a, as that's hell. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, you got that packet? <laughs> <laughs> just want to borrow it. Yeah. <laughs> you want to borrow the packet? No, you can bring it back. <laughs> he's going to get it back when he's done. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'll bring it in, sure. <laughs> We're well, such fat guys that we crave for hot sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's 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 really well done. I, I will have linked to it in social media by the time this episode is out. This is what we're recording a little bit in advance. This episode's going on the Frank Bank, but but we want to talk about it on the main feed because people should check it out if they haven't. And where can they and see it? Casey? Yeah, where can people see it? Oh, uh, you can see it on it at its exclusive streaming home, uh, my website, CaseyMakesMovies dot com. <laughs> you can check it out there. Yeah, hey, easy uh, to slash short films, but. Click around. There's a bunch of stuff you can watch. Everywhere. Yeah, check it all out. A great website. I mean, pay, the people can find that. It's like Birdfuck in, in many ways. Yeah, it's, like, it's a lot like Birdfuck. Yeah, we can like link that. to it from Birdfuck. We can link to it from Birdfuck. <laughs> Why don't we, we'll, go, we'll, we'll do that. Yeah. So visit Birdfuck or Birdpluck. Birdpluck also redirects now to birdfuck.com. <laughs> Our guest is just like, what the fuck are they talking about? <laughs> let's uh, let's 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 hit him. And uh, sorry to any uh, sorry to any new listeners. Let's hit him with a drop. There was a Reddit post the other day. It's like Mitch farted. No. They were like Mitch farted. I'm like, first of all, I don't just fart during <laughs> record. Yeah, excuse me. I'm like, uh, and then what do you think you stuck like, the microphone fucking, up his butt to I catch can, it? I, <laughs> excuse me. I can mute it. I can do. Excuse me. Anything. I don't fart during the records for God's sake. <laughs> and second of all. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That is, the is it. excuse me drop. <laughs> Hi everyone. No comment on this one. It's guess who it is? It's our boy Finky. Wow, Finky. Yeah, Chris Finky. Well done, Finky. I mean, it was funny. Yeah, it made me laugh. <laughs> Those weren't real. Those were added. Yeah, we know they're not real. People thought they were real. They weren't real. No one thought they were real. A lot of people listening to this probably thought they were real. <laughs> no one thought it was real. That wasn't even a drop. That yeah. was just a stupid. It wasn't just a clip from the podcast. Someone, Finky added those in there. So, Jemmy did toot a couple times she last did record. Last week. I don't know what that was all about. Mm -hmm. Tooting lady. I think she was just so comfy. Yeah, I can't. Mm -hmm. can you, to relax. I have that effect on people. <laughs> <laughs> they fart in front of you a lot. <laughs> uh, drops at birdfuck.com. Hey, mm. we have a great guest in studio today. First time on the podcast from Jellystone Shrill and Grace and Frankie. Nicole Thurman wow. is here. Hi, Nicole. Thanks so much for Hello. being here. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad to be here. A what, pleasure. What a this hoot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're talking before we recorded while we were waiting for Mitch to show up mm. that you are from. <laughs> I know you know you spent some time in Chicago. I want to. <laughs> I was I got there four minutes before you, and I was like, "Oh my god, he's late." No, I'm <laughs> uh, I, well, I, I want to I want to talk about Chicago some because I know you live there. Um, Chicago but eats. Is that what you want to talk about? Before we get to Chicago, I didn't know this. You're originally from Kansas City. Yeah, I'm originally from Kansas City. I wow. yeah. <laughs> What are the, so? What's the Kansas City like? What are the uh, what's the food scene like mm -hmm. there? Are there any like iconic local restaurants or local chains oh to make you think of home? It's bar it's barbecue, barbecue. Right? barbecue. It's all yeah, barbecue yeah, yeah. for sure. Barbecue is the biggest 
thing there. I'm trying to think of the ones that I used to like. Arthur Bryant's. Okay. Adrian's. I believe there's like a Jack Stack, I think is popular. And most of them are like the good ones yeah. are like the ones that are downtown in the still deserted part of downtown, which is like, I don't know, like, well, neither, neither of your cities are like that, but like, uh, mm. you know, like in a D Detroit or something, yeah, like those sure. cities where they're like, they were once a thing and then they weren't, and now they're coming back. Uh, yeah, all of the like great barbecue restaurants are in the like dead areas where you find nothing. So yeah. just like vacant buildings vacant and building. like empty apartments yeah. above the above Squatters them. But like, yeah, peeing yeah. outside right. and you're like, I'm mm. getting BBQ today. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, it's good. It's it's good. Yeah, but I don't, I feel like also though, like recently it's become more of like a, what's the word when it's like a shishi fancy, like uh, American yeah. contemporary, like uh a lot of people have been moving back from, okay. you know, Gentr gentrification LA. or whatever, yeah, or just yeah. like uh, midlife crises, and they're moving back from their, sure. but where they where they went to make it, and then they're like, I'm tired, I want to go home. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I'm halfway there, so I get it. But where are they? It's where are they? Cool. I mean, you're, like you're, 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 I don't have far like, to go. You, know. you, you yeah. live, you live here. I so live you here, can't so. really, and I, but and I'm way past midlife. We both are. Well, in terms of life expectancy, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think we're. I think we're. I yeah. think we're. We're. We're done for. Towards the but, finish line. Yeah. Yeah. But you guys are doing okay. That's the thing. If you weren't sitting uh, here and you were just sitting at home, and you're like, this isn't working for me. You go back to where you were from if you were not from here. Right. Right. Sure, yeah. <laughs> no, we had the the. I won't. I won't say good sense. The good luck. The good fortune to just take what we would talk about anyway. Um. Uh, eating shitty food and then just put microphones in front of our mouths. <laughs> Pretty great. Pretty <laughs> worked out. I love uh, it. I would, I would hit up, uh, I would love to hit up Adrian's. You know who I yeah, yeah. My good friend Rocky Balboa. He goes there? Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Ad his Adrian, his, his oh, yo, Adrian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, because yeah. you, you could have said like, I really want some barbecue. I'm gonna go to Adrian. <laughs> Rocky. <laughs> I'll rewrite your joke. Don't <laughs> no, your reaction. No, that is funny. I love that. We, my sister's name is Adrian, and we used to do that. We'd be like, Yo, Adrian, shut up. So it was like, <laughs> that's for you, my sister. What, it, what's your barbecue go-to? She's not watching. Yeah, yeah. It's very interesting that you ask what my barbecue go-to is because I'm not a huge barbecue person. Oh and wow. So so it's one of those things where you're like, you're from the city and they know, uh, you know, Wizard of Oz and barbecue. And you're like, okay, well, my middle name is Dorothy. So I'll embrace that for oh, you. <laughs> my grandma's name. And I'm from Kansas. And then, uh, but yeah, but barbecue wise, I feel like what I gravitate towards if I'm going to eat barbecue, is it like a Southern, Cali Southern California, South Carolina kind of thing? Like okay. where it's like the mustardy sauce. Oh, which, yeah. Is that the one? Because I don't really like, I don't really love a sweet and savory mix. So I like uh, the tanginess of that better. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, I uh, I don't I I'm so bad with defining the barbecue lines. We'll just get in trouble. People will just get mad at us for this. This is a thing we don't know about. We We're don't not know from about barbecue. It. Country. We don't know. We don't know that. We don't. We just don't know stuff. So we don't know the one that's more like vinegary yeah, versus we don't know. dry versus more molasses or whatever. We don't know. We don't I watch know. like I don't. don't I'm know. from there. I don't know either. I just watched a couple episodes of like a Food Network thing. That's why I yeah. think I, I feel like I saw like they do those crazy <laughs> competitions and stuff with barbecue. It's like such a. It is such it's a intense. thing. We can't be doing research like We're that for the show. We can't be doing that. Y'all are eating a burger then sitting on a chair and talking about it. Exactly. Like, come on now. That's yeah. what you want to do. No, I get it. Um, my my sister recently called me with my god sister, Sarah yeah. Kylie. And they were at they were they were at a Wizard of Oz play for my god uh my goddaughter. Uh and uh they were like, You would have made such a great cowardly lion. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Which I was just like, ah, thanks, I guess. So wait, in this, I feel like I've been sitting in this chair for like ten minutes. Yeah, and you've been called sweaty. You farted, and yeah. then now you're talking about cowardly lion. Like people are playing you. You need to. I mean, the cowardly lion. I mean, yes, that Revenge is that's tour. my life. Uh, yeah, that, right. that is that is kind of the that's my lot in life. That's okay. You could okay. play that well. You could embody that well. I think that's a compliment. You, you really think so? Oh, yeah. oh, even the eyes. Oh, he had like the sad little eyes. Actually, that was so good. That was good. Wow, masterclass, you guys. <laughs> no, but for real, that was good. <laughs> I was a munchkin in Wizard of Oz. Wow. I was a crow. Were you really? Wow. Like, that was what, yeah. We had, we, in the musical, did you guys, if you did the musical, I don't know, but there's like a song that the crows sing with the scarecrow. Whoa. <laughs> I, was, I was a mega munchkin because I was still pretty big. This is fifth grade. So I was pretty, 
I was like a full donut, basically. Yeah. I wasn't so cute. Oh my god! I just want to be with a kid now. A crow. Yeah, we got we got we got the short end of the stick in yeah. that oh, one. Oh hell yeah, yeah we did. Yeah. And I think yeah. I was like understudying the Wicked Witch, and I was like, okay, oh, so that's is she gonna good. get mono or not? Like, yeah, yeah. she did actually get sick once, and I was like, hmm? but no, yeah, she. Was my sister got mono yeah. for a London trip, and my dad and I went solo with my godparents' family. Yeah, yeah. my mom and my mom and sister had to stay home. And I gave her a lot of crap because it's the kissing. They call right. it the kissing disease or whatever, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And when uh, you have pink eye, people are like, did you touch poop? A butt. Yeah. Right, Did you right, touch right. a butt? Yeah. yeah. Did you yeah. touch a butt? I feel like those are the two ones where you, you can immediately make fun of somebody for being sick. <laughs> pink eyes. I had a camp. Pink eye. You ever have pink eye? Disgusting. Ooh, I, I have had pink eye. It is disgusting. It's, it's pretty awful. Yeah. 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 But it's thankfully like fair, fairly treatable. You just got to like the, the tough thing for a kid is you, you end up touching the the – Eye with the same hand. Yeah. yeah That's yeah. actually a thing I learned from having pink eye when I was like eight or whatever is like, I only touch my left eye with my left hand, only touch my right eye with my right hand, like just always. Like, this yeah. is my general rule. What? <laughs> yeah. Wait, I'm confused by that. Like, my, my, cause if you touch your left eye, oh, I got pink then, eye here, and, then, and yeah, I touch yeah, it with my yeah, left yeah, hand, and then yeah. I touch that hand to my right yeah, eye, yeah, then you I've transferred it over to my other eye. Just a heads up, by the way, most of our guests who leave the studio get pink eye. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm already feeling a little scratchy scratch. I'm ready. <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> Imagine if you had pink eye and mono. What would oh. people think? Oh, my oh God. God. Pink like head. <laughs> touching butts, booties. You had a fun night. <laughs> Come on now. They wouldn't be mad. I would say that's a good thing. Being a millennial and eating ass. That's what you were doing. You were eating that ass. Yeah, that's right. You are kissing yeah. it and you got it in your eye. <laughs> is there, are there high numbers of conjunctivitis in millennials? Is that what, is that, is that, is, I want to see the, I don't know. It could be. I want to see the numbers, you Biden. Should, yeah, see the numbers. See when eating ass became like a thing everybody talked about and then see when pink eye cases went up. <laughs> <laughs> so not a big, not a big barbecue person. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, that's, that's an interesting thing when like your, your region, your regional cuisine is known for something. Yeah. Like, like, and then that doesn't like click with you. The big thing for us is, uh, Emma, you don't, and we're just, your parents were just here, they were. but you are not a lobster fan as someone who has lived some time in Maine. No, yeah. I just can't do the texture yeah. of it. I don't yeah, know yeah, what yeah. it is. It just doesn't, doesn't vibe with me. Every time my dad makes lobsters, he makes me scallops instead. Aww. That's Everybody wild. Has Hold lobster. on a second. That is wild to me. Right. Because more I people like would. scallops and not oh. lobster. Over lobster. That's because true. it's like, it is like, it's also texture it's a weird texture i only like scallops in new england i think like i don't like the big sure. scallops little ones like the ones my dad gets in new england are like these big fat juicy scallops they're so good that's but wild I only wow. eat them there. <laughs> what is so what what's what is it just is lobster too rubbery for you is that yeah it? it's yeah. like a rubbery thing i didn't like shrimp for the longest time for the same mm -hmm. reason mm -hmm. but like lobster specifically i try it every year just just in case maybe this year i like it and it yeah hasn't yeah. clicked yet so i'm that's the worst talking about the oyster around. people yeah, yeah, yeah. Same, yeah, same thing with oysters. We're oysters. Oysters. oysters right. I love oysters, but I said there's there's a there's oyster people that always do this. Every dinner I go to, I'm like, I'm gonna get oysters because I love oysters. And then someone at the table is always like, I don't really like them, but I think I'm gonna try one this time. And yeah, they yeah. like it. And, I'm like, and then okay. you see them try one, they're like, Yeah. And I'm like, I could have had like, that freaking oyster, man. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then you're not supposed to chew it. You're not like, supposed to chew it. That's what makes like it so chewing. bad. I know people yeah. chew them. But I do get the lobster. I feel like lobster also is like um, rubbery, but then it's like a squeaky feeling you get on your teeth. Yeah. yeah. That's what mm. I don't like. It's, it's entirely the texture for me. Not yeah. the flavor. I don't mind the flavor, the smell of it. That's fine. It's just like there's a texture thing. Yeah. Just, uh, That's why me. I'm with eating ass. <laughs> 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 I'm just kidding. Too much eating ass talk. I'm not even this person. What's happening? The cameras are on. <laughs> I have no boys for you. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the show. <sighs> I've never been offered ass, but I don't uh, know if I would. On like a, an ass platter. And be like, yeah. you know, I'm actually thinking so much. Uh, like walking around a party as a caterer. Um, but ass? you're eating oysters? Weird. Yeah. Ew. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like that, but that is has always been a thing for me of not like digging barbecue and yeah, feeling yeah. really awkward about it. But I, I, I do like like I love like a smoky meat. Oh sure. Like I, mm -hmm, I just think it's mm -hmm. the sauce that throws me, which is weird. But it's like I have very specific like if I taste any kind of sweetness in something, I automatically don't love it. A lot, barbecue, salty. a lot of barbecue. A lot of barbecue sauce is really sweet. Too. Yeah. It's really sweet. Like yeah, yeah. yeah. What would you, what would your what would be your go to if you had to choose a favorite barbecue feud? I got food. food. I got I said feud barbecue f and barbecue feud. Cows you versus know farmers. <laughs> yeah, that's a great one. Uh, <laughs> Cows not doing so hot there. They're yeah. losing. They're losing the war. Yeah, yeah no. I feel like it will turn at some point. Um, I uh, I have my answer, but i'm kind of with you because i wish i love the chili's baby back ribs song great song and my mom loves <laughs> ribs and uh, like a lot of people love ribs dan and if you have like good ribs they're yeah. fantastic 
But a lot of the time I don't. I feel like ribs can be pretty bad. Mm-hmm. Like, I, when I right, yeah. Well, so so I I stopped eating pork, but when I did, I always would prefer over the ribs, like a pulled pork mm-hmm. or like a like it, a, just a good barbecue sausage. Like you run of those mm. sometimes, and those can those can really pulled hit. pork too. But, but pulled pork is almost boring to me. My answer is brisket. Brisket. My, well, that's that's what I was gonna say. As someone yeah. who doesn't eat pork anymore, like it's I default to brisket. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. I love brisket. I love a good brisket. Me too. I love like the fatty brisket. You know how they yeah, have sure. lean brisket. I'm like, why would you get lean brisket when you can get all that? Mm. Yeah. So yeah, I uh, <laughs> but yeah, I like I like brisket. I think also with the ribs thing that is interesting because what's the ribs that are like? Oh, short ribs. Short ribs are delicious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. But mm-hmm. I think we just we're we're all seeming to be like we we gravitate towards the meatier side of things. Yes, right. <laughs> and ribs can be super hit or miss. Like they can be really like oh, there's just like a little shred. Or it's a lot. And also, I like uh, I don't like eating things off of the bone. Mm, mm. Interesting. Even with wings, I use a fork. I don't know. I'm just weird. Some people, we were just having a conversation where people were saying that they love eating off I, the bone. I right? do like bones. Yeah. I do like eating off of the bones. But I had a phase when I was like, I, I, I did not like want. Bones. <laughs> I Quote, like unquote, bones. Quote, unquote, Nick Wire. I like bones eating ass <laughs> and barbecue. <laughs> Dope boys. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> I used to no, I I used to like only like like boneless chicken or whatever, and yeah. then I reached a certain point where I was, I was just having more I think rotisserie chickens or whatever, and I just got really into it. And like yeah, now I, I wings are some of my favorite foods. Love fried chicken. I love anything off of the bone, and I always want that element of it. I also just think like the meat is juicier. But I understand You're a regular it's, bone it's a, collector. I am a I'm a <laughs> bit of a bone collector. The issue is that it it's like. It's always a pain in the ass to eat. Like yes, I get the fork thing because why. I'm so it's so messy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I mean, like, 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 I, I, I there, there's a certain time w- and a place for bones, but like, 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 a lot of times you want no muss, no fuss. You yeah. want to just be eating with a utensil or eating with something where I'm, I'm not going to go wash up afterwards, you know. And that's how I feel about, uh, yeah, eating with bones or eating with anything. I just like don't like to be messy, and that's probably why I don't love barbecue. My mom said ever since I was like a baby, I just ate very like neatly and didn't like to make a mess and yeah. so i just think that the food that food isn't is is against my morals and my code <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's just not for me but no it is good and you know what i like here have you guys ever been to blood so's yes there? yeah blood so's i'm sure people yeah that yeah. place is like i love it's very their good. barbecue yeah but i because i don't put the sauce on it i just eat the smoky like brisket and i think right. it's delicious yeah yeah there's no one who was telling us Moose Craft or something. Moose. Yeah, Moose Craft. Moose Craft. Maybe you told us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did. Casey, did you tell Casey us. is a barbecue guy. What's your What's your Ooh. go-to barbecue? Uh, I I mean, in I've terms always of, in been, terms of meat. In terms of meat, uh, I grew up like a baby back rib guy okay, myself. Okay. But but as I've gotten older, brisket is like yeah. yeah. Can you agree I, that baby back ribs will, a lot of the time oftentimes can be bad? If they're bad, they're awful. Yeah. But yeah. if they're good, they're great. Yeah. yeah. No, no. Episode one of Doughboys, mm-hmm. we went to Chili's, and at the, the f- time they had the Dr. Pepper ribs. I was going to make a Phantom Menace joke. It's fine. I just didn't get to do it in quick, quick Should enough. I, do you want to uh, I heard uh, you like, oh, uh, yeah. Do you want to just mark the edit, and then we'll just Take snip that out, and we'll just set it up again. Um, so episode one of Doughboys. The Phantom men. Uh, you didn't even have it? <laughs> you didn't even have it. No, it's because he set it up that he had it. So then it was the pressure of delivering it. I totally get this move. I do this all the time with jokes, all the time. I'm like, oh my God, I have the best fucking idea. Ever. And then I try to pitch it and it's like, nah. That's so the fun. Fan, the Fanto Menuous. <laughs> okay, okay. It was clunky, but we did get there. <laughs> we went to at Chili's at the time, they had brought back their baby back baby back ribs and they had a Dr. Pepper like sauce mm-hmm. and it was so cloyingly sweet. It was like kind of disgusting. Oh, right. So yeah. those episode one, those were like bad, like gray ribs too. It was like low quality was, meat. Uh, me, yeah. you, Eva and Jar Jar, I think was there. Yeah. Jar Jar was there. <laughs> Jar Jar. <laughs> uh, we went to, remember we went to the, I took you to the barbecue place in Texas. Texas That's right. Has, Texas has, okay, maybe I do kind of like barbecue because I'm like, Texas has great barbecue too. We no. were we were in the barbecue town. What the hell is it called where they they filmed some of uh Oh, I know what you're talking about. Lockhart. Have... Lockhart. Yeah. Wow. Oh. Nice pull, Wags. Yeah. And I, I, the one who showed you, I forgot it. Lockhart, Texas, where they filmed some of uh, that movie. <sighs> uh, Friday Night Lights? No. Wouldn't that be funny if I was just right? I mean, first guess, I mean, that's a great guess. That is a great guess. It's a... Uh, you know the guy Varsity who does the, he does the silly improv movies, and I can't even remember his name, and I love him. And it's, it's insane. Christopher Guest. Yes, Christopher Guest. Oh, insane I that I know. forgot his name. Christopher Guest. At, which which one would it have been though? The one with the play. Oh, oh the, uh, waiting, waiting for, for Guffman. Guffman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guffman. big one. Yeah. yeah. 
That's a big great one. movie. Look, my brain's been mush for six months. You're doing great. I, yeah, Mitch, I don't know back. if this was, the, the, you probably, this was a, a Kiss from Daddy, my old sketch group, and the Birthday Boys, your old sketch group, this was probably like a split night where mm-hmm. they, but there was a night that Christopher Guest came to see our show, do you remember? Oh, right. He was in the audience, and this was a night where we were doing a, a, a Christmas show uh, for my sketch group, um, so it was kind of more of a one-act play as opposed to a whole sketch show, but the the bit I was doing was that I was playing uh, a, a like you know there were elves there and there was Santa there or whatever but I was playing Zangief from Street Fighter and mm-hmm. I just lived at the North Pole so I had full Zangief cosplay which is like red <laughs> underwear and a fake hairy chest and like a fa- a mohawk and a beard and no one knew Christopher Guest was going to show up in advance so it's like so this is like potentially a guy who could cast me in something, seeing me do something back yeah. when I thought I could maybe act or something. And, and he was attached to the Street Fighter movie. And he wasn't going to make the Street Fighter movie over time. But I'm up there like as Zangief just going like, ah! It's like, <laughs> well, all right. Maybe he likes that. Maybe he likes me doing a spinning punch. I wonder if the Doughboy show sucked that night. Who knows? Uh, the Birthday Boys, you mean? Uh, oh. The Doughboy show always sucks. Uh. Birthday, the Birthday Boy show. Yeah. I forget what it was. Yeah. Uh, he uh, look a great filmmaker. I forgot yeah. his name. I forgot what movie was it's there. Easy to forget things. Lockhart, oh, great city. If you want good barbecue, there's a. We had like three spots. Hey, hey, we, let's let's pivot over to speaking of uh, great cities. Let's let's pivot over to Chicago, one of the best food cities mm. in in oh, America. Yeah. So you lived there for many years. You're doing Second City. Uh, do you have any Chicago food favorites? Oh my goodness, I should have thought this one out before. Oh, you know what's really good? Yeah. Uh, is the, I mean, this is not that exciting, but the Ocheval ver- burger. Have you ever had oh, Ocheval? Yeah, okay, okay. Oh, yeah. I've never had it, but I know, I know, I know, I know, it's, I know, yeah. it's, it's, I know, it's, I know yeah. it's a good burger. They're a delicious burger. I mean, as far as pizzas go, I am not a huge deep dish person. I like New York style better than Chicago yeah, style. But, sure. you know, we went to Gino's East. They have gr- they have good deep dish. Pequod's has the best. Like, just have you guys been to Pequod's? I have, well, been to have Pequod's, had, yeah. right? I feel like that's like one of those places. I feel that like you I forced go. you to go to Pequod's <laughs> as well. I've been to Pequod's twice. It's so what good. the hell? Once without you. What the when the fuck did you go without me? Don't worry about it. I, no, it N- Nelly and I were in Chicago. We went to Pequod's. Oh, it had been after, yeah, yeah, yeah. after right? It was yeah, after yeah, yeah. our thing. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Fucked up. I've only been once. We can go back. Yeah, mediations. I mean, if Second. we if we are there, I would. I like to, yeah. here. I like Pequod's. Yeah. I like uh, the Portillo's. Oh, yeah. I always want to go to Portillo's. I've never had Portillo's. You've never wow. had Portillo's? I know. Wow. Isn't that wild? How long did you live in Chicago? 10 years almost. Wow. wow. People are going to yeah. be, our listeners are going to get mad. Well, like, wait, I should say one <laughs> Chicago thing that I had that if you guys have had it, I I, list, I need to get some credit for it. Yes. Malort. Have Malort. you ever had Malort? Oh, yeah, we have We've had Malort. Malort. They made us Freaking do it at our lot. They made us do it at our live show. Oh, of course. Because I was yeah. going to say, if you go to Chicago, I'm sure, and if it's a food show, it's disgusting, but that's a very Chicago thing, and that's a, was a big deal back when I, I used to wait tables and like we always took shots of Malort, and it's just disgusting. I don't even understand why that's a thing in Chicago. I uh, like so I had it, and I think that with the everyone had set me up like this is the worst, this is disgusting, this is like you know drinking kerosene or whatever. I didn't like oh, it, but kinda, I didn't you, mind you it. Kinda, I didn't, yeah, mind it. Kinda, I didn't yeah. hate it. Yeah, well, it's like a funky taste. It's like yeah, a yeah. grapefruity, weird. Al- I don't know. It's I, I I don't think it's like drinking Everclear, but I just think it's nasty. It's a like a way. worse, yeah. a worse like Fernet. And I actually yes. like Fernet. I like Fernet. You don't like Fernet. No, I don't like Fernet yeah. at all. Waiting for Duffman, a good Simpsons title. <laughs> Is it real? <laughs> oh no, it's not real. It maybe has it already happened. Like it's yeah. a possibility that it's Season already. It's 36, po- they may have already done Waiting for Duffman. Can we check on That's that? Is Waiting for one. Duffman an episode of The Simpsons? Just saying, it would be a good title. Wait, where were you? Uh, like, where were you so waiting tables? It is season what kind of twenty-six, episode we... seventeen. Wait, really? Oh, wait, what is it? <laughs> season twenty-six, episode seventeen. All right, now, here, now, now, here's another <laughs> question. Did I was I working on the show at that time? <laughs> when was season twenty-six? Would be. Oh, I was gone. All right, so I okay. probably did not know it. That would be so funny if you were like, "Oh yeah, waiting <laughs> I for came Duffman." Up with that. <laughs> waiting for Duffman is the, 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 the actual Simpsons title. They used it. Simpsons did it. So you're waiting That's tables. Where are you waiting tables at? Are we talking about Chicago still? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I did mostly wait tables in Chicago. I worked at like all different kinds of places. One of the biggest ones that I worked at was Revolution Brewery, which is now okay. a huge like chain or not chain, but like nationwide place. Uh, but that was like for me, that was the biggest food and beer and whatever, just like very Chicago experience. It was in Logan Square. Have you guys been there? Have you ever been there? I've yeah, never been. Yeah. Oh, you've been. Wait, we have been? Not to Revolution. Revolution. There's a brewery. Oh, okay. There's like a brew pub. Same in Square. And then there's a brewery where they make the beer. Sorry, okay. I keep hitting the microphone. Um, but anyway, they had 
they had like really good uh, like duck fat popcorn with bacon and sage oh, and oh, like wow. just really like kind of like heavier brewery food or what do you call it? gastropub food. Uh, so I, w- I worked there for a few years and that was like, you know, everybody was super into the beers and the food there. So sure. it was like a big thing. And then I worked at like a fine dining place where you do the thing where you're like, have you ever dined with us before? It's oh, all small plates and we recommend two to three. That seems and stressful. It it fine dining is stress. I don't. It's interesting actually. Oh, okay. Because I waited tables so long. I did breakfast places. I did like sports bars, regular bars. Breakfast place seems actually the most stressful. Yeah, that to would me. probably be maybe be chaotic. I just feel like breakfast is always crowded, and then there's a rush, and then people are mad waiting. That's brunch. That That's br- I think okay. brunch is worse than breakfast because breakfast I did. It was in College Town, but it was a busy spot. But it was like six a.m. to two, which at first I was like, what? But then. It was great. It was like, yeah, I'm done at 2 p.m. You're done at 2. I'm going yeah, to take yeah. a little nap and I'm going out. You know, it was like, it was yeah. nice. It wasn't that bad, but brunch is, I think, where people get cuckoo bananas. And I don't even understand what happens to them, but it's like, it is Saturday. I want four drinks and I have a bad attitude. Like, right. and I yeah. want to sit down immediately. Like, it's that kind of place. It's that kind of experience. Yeah. yeah. If you get bottomless mimosas and then like people are like chugging two on yes. an empty stomach, it's just like, you're going to be fucked up. Yeah, and then yeah. you're going to be belligerent and it's the worst person to deal with. But wait, okay. Yeah. So, so what, what yeah. about fine dining? Cause like, yeah. The thing oh, that yeah. would stress me out is that I feel like I have to remember a bunch of shit. Like, right? Yes. Like, aren't you like specials? Don't you have to like describe them in ornate language? Yeah. Or I'm bad at that. You know? I will admit I am bad at it. Yeah. Especially because like the longer you wait tables, the less you give two shits. One time somebody sure. asked me for a fork and I was like, <sighs> like that? Like, I, did. I really was. My boss had to be like, girl, you cannot do that when people ask you for silverware. <laughs> I was just so, I mean, I think I quit like very soon after that because yeah, I was just yeah. done. Um, but that no, it's not. Yeah, it it's just it, you hit. You it hit happens the wall. with our show. It's true. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, you just run into a wall. and You're like, I can't do it anymore. Right. Don't talk to me about one more piece of fucking bacon, or I'm gonna. Anyway. Um. I mean, well, you're the you you're yeah. the longest tenured doughboy besides Nick and I, who are done with the show, anyways. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think Emma is probably ultimately going to be the longest tenured doughboy, though. That's so funny. We'll get swapped out at some point. the exit. Yeah. What is that plant in my head? Okay. Um, yeah, but it it is hard to memorize everything, and that's the thing too, because at the beginning you have like a meeting, and they all tell you the specials, and people, you know, people that some of the managers that work fine dining can be a little bit scary. I mean, I never sure. worked like at per se. I worked in New York at the most. The nicest place I worked was New York in the West Village, uh, and but it wasn't like it was like per se, or anything. it wasn't like a big deal. Yeah, sure. Um, but it it. I think the reason I like it more is because it's almost like people, tr- uh, it's almost like customers trust you more. You can just say oh, anything. Sure. Yeah, it's juicy and uh, fruity with a, a stone fruit uh, back on a wa- glass of wine. I don't know what I just said. <laughs> I'm wrong and they're going to get it. You know? Yeah, right. But I think it's because it's like they're kind of like, I think that in fine dining, you guide the, ex- I know it sounds silly, but it's like you guide the experience more and mm-hmm. you feel more of a, like a, a connection to the restaurant because you're yeah, like, sure. you care about it. I mean, it's it's a very, I actually really, I, I also really liked waiting tables in New York for that reason. Cause they're as food cities go, as far as for me, uh, I loved, I thought New York had that. It just had something about the food industry that felt professional and like cool. Yeah. As opposed right. to being like, what are you doing? You know, what's your real job? You know, that kind of vibe. Sure. Yeah. So that's what I do like fine dining actually. Oh, okay. Casual fine dining. Yeah, sure. I'm sure. not, I will never memorize anything well enough to work a, a nice place. We went to the, like the nicest in terms of uh, restaurants that we ever went to was, uh, was Le Bernardin in New York City, mm-hmm. which is Eric Repair's restaurant. He's like a top, had been on Top Chef a bunch. Mm-hmm. And that was like, it was just the, the sort of thing where it was so nice that we were uncomfortable. Like there was yeah. a guy who was com- like, he had a, an amazing bread basket with like, eight different types of bread. It was like ridiculous. Uh, but then like you'd have breadcrumbs on the table and like a guy would like run over like a, a ball boy at a tennis match with like a little and then yeah. scrape the 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 crumbs off your table. Yes. Like they wouldn't even be there for 10 seconds. Yes. I was like, this is stressing me out. I'm being too doted on. That's that's what the deal with the managers that I'm talking yeah. about. It can start to feel like a, a army ser- sergeant. Or right. But yeah, the crumbing of the tables, the moving. Uh, you should never have an empty glass ever. Like as soon as yeah. the glass is empty, you take it off the table. It's like, yeah, stuff like that is stressful. But it's, I mean, it's nice. But, I, you know, I also worked at like in Chicago, I worked at this, what was it called? Oh, the Boundary. This like shitty sports bar that I, I, it was in like this hipster area. And I'm, you know, a little bit of a hipster. <laughs> and I was like <laughs> driving by it. And I was like, ew, a sports bar in Wicker Park. That's disgusting. And then I ended up working there. <laughs> and let me tell you, I was drinking all the I mean, it was yeah, fun sure. though. I was drinking all the time. At one point, I drew a penis on a man's head when we were watching a football game while I was working because it was just like a goofy, crazy environment. So it's kind of like 
all jobs have their perks. All of those kinds of jobs do have their vibes and their perks to them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was looking up the, I was trying to find the name of the burger place I went to, but as I was, because I've never done a lot of fine dining in Chicago, though I should, it's a great food city. Yeah. Um, but the, uh, I was looking for my, bur- this burger place I went to and I found Fatso's Last Stand oh. instead. Oh. And I think it's just a great name for Fatso's Last Stand. This is such a great Chicago yeah. name. Oh God, uh, yeah. Kuma's Corner is where I. Oh yeah, been. Kuma's Corner is great. I, I went. I to forgot about Kuma's. Kuma's yes. Corner. I went and I liked, uh, but I I know what I really you know what I really like, and maybe it is it, it is it is touristy, but I, the Billy Goat Tavern wags. Sure. I like oh, the no, Billy Goat Tavern. Great. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, Gibson's that's a big mm-hmm. one for me. It's a steakhouse in Chicago. I guess I that's used to work at a restaurant dining. across the street from there. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. Across, across from Gibson's. I worked at this. Uh, it, I can't remember what it's called. It's like a Mexican. Uh, you know, nice, cute. Like they were trying to do Mexican food, but like charge you way too much money for sure. like what you sh- could get at a cool truck for like five dollars. Sure, yeah, yeah. So like they, it's it, LA. It, a lot of LA restaurants just yeah. do the same thing. Well, this was in Chicago, but yes, it was the same. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. it was, yeah. And we had to wear these like short skirts. It was like a cocktailing job. We had to wear short skirts, and it's Chicago, so we'd be outside cocktailing, and it's windy, Jesus. and we're like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, just, yeah, yeah. the experience. And I'm not a short. I mean, I'm a shorter gal, gal. Shorter skirt gal person. I can't talk. Yeah. Um, but, you know, <laughs> uh, it it was a lot. But, yeah, Gibson's is nice. You know who, what else is nice that I should mention is uh, Long Man and Eagle. You guys are probably – have you been there? Long Man and Eagle. Long Man and Eagle. Long Man and Yeah, Eagle. it's in Logan Square. Ooh, I have, I have not been there. I have not been there. Oh, you have to go there. Yeah. I bet a lot of your uh, listeners would know it because I'm it's sure. like a very – Sounds like a Nickelodeon a, show, honestly. Long Man and Eagle. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. It's like Pete and Pete and then Long Man and Eagle is right after Pete and Pete. Yeah. <laughs> Dan Schneider Pete created it, but he stayed away since. <laughs> <laughs> God, that fucking document. Uh, but yeah, that place is amazing. It's like, so that was like the first, Lo- Logan Square is like this area that kind of just like blew up once Revolution came and like started a brewery there. And Longman is uh, down the street. They have incredible food. I'm trying to think, it's like the type of place where you can get like bone marrow, but like yeah, sure. in an accessible chill way. Right. <laughs> Weiger's been picketing in front of Nickelodeon to bring back Schneider. <laughs> Do you think you'd spend more time on the line for the the WGA strike or for the bring back Schneider thing? Bring back <laughs> one guy, please. Yeah. I just rolled right into it, so I've lost count of days at this point. It's been my life for the past year. Uh, let's talk so about uh, okay. We got to talk about your your dog because we have Jemmy oh, yeah. here. Jemmy. Um, but you are a dog mom yourself. Mm-hmm. I should have brought her. I was actually thinking. I was like, wonder if I could. That would. Uh, been, I wonder what totally would happen. Jemmy would be so fine with that. Yeah, yeah. she's at daycare. She's okay. She'd be like sleeping like that too. But yeah, she's like a little beagle pug chihuahua mix. Her name's Izzy. I'm. Cute. It's like to the point where. I'm so obsessed that pretty much everybody is just like, how's Izzy when they first see me? Yeah. They, there's nothing else to really talk about. So it's just like, how's Izzy? And she's We should put up a, 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 a pic of Izzy yeah. if you have one in the, in the episode so people can see. Oh, definitely. Yeah. She's really cute. And we just, we have fun together. It was, I wanted a dog forever. And then mm-hmm. I was dating someone who had a dog and he would leave his dog with me for like three weeks or something when, if he had to travel. And I was like, I can't. I can do this. And so then as soon as we broke up, I got a dog. <laughs> like literally, I, I had COVID when I broke up with, with him. I shouldn't tell him. I had COVID when I broke up with him and I like still had the mask on when I yeah. met my dog. Like I was that, it was wow. that fast. But it was like, she was the first dog I met. I wasn't even planning on looking at her because I wanted to get a boy dog really. I don't know why I just had this idea of like, I'm a boy dog mom. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I got I ended up with Izzy and she's insane and so sweet and I love it. It's nice. I had Wally and Irma, my cats, oh, yeah. uh, during the pandemic, and it was a lifesaver to just yeah. be able to right. talk yes. to them. I lived alone, so it was yeah. great to have them there. It was, it was, it's, it's, it's yeah. a huge difference. I think that's because for me, it's like after having been in a relationship, COVID, I live alone as well. So yeah, then just being like newly single and like, okay, what do I do now? It was so nice having a dog. Yeah, and yeah, it still is. It's still, it's one of those things where I, I don't really ever feel lonely anyway because I'm a pretty like. Uh, loner, uh, pretty sure. loner type of person. I like to like go to movies alone. I'll go to dinner alone or whatever. Oh yeah, me too. Speaking yeah. of this but guy's yeah. language, yeah, and he's married, yeah. but he yeah. still does, he he's still he still nice likes to be though. alone. And it's nice to do, even if like yeah, because then you can still have your time. Exactly, treat right, yourself. Right. Right. It's kind of like a fun little. But yeah, so his I wife like likes that. it too. His wife likes she it. She loves it. She's like, <laughs> she's like, Bye, get out the house. I've been waiting for you to leave since two thirty. <laughs> 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 I'm um, almost done. Yeah. I have to just finish reading my manga. That's, 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 this is him in his house. <laughs> I, gotta I have to, I, and I got a couple hours of uh, Baldur's Gate to play too. <laughs> nerd shit. I got to finish this nerd shit and then I'll be out. <laughs> no. Uh, what we ta- I don't even know what we're talking about. But yeah, Izzy's great. Oh, you, you know what? You know what's fun is yeah. that uh, like a, uh, 
when you were single in the pandemic oh, and yeah, then that, yeah. you would match with someone and then they'd be like, mm-hmm. like, let's meet up. And you're like, uh, uh, me, uh, you, know, you wouldn't want to, you wouldn't want to, you wouldn't want to see the per. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it was all right. It was an immediate red flag for oh, someone. Right. Yeah, like sure. at the very be- oh, right. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was really weird. That was, that whole period was weird though. Cause I feel like you would find out which one, which of your friends were like the worst. <laughs> and yeah. then which of your friends were like maybe a little bit too hardcore about it, even though two extremes where you're like, okay, chill, chill out. Like we are, this is bad, but like just wear the mask and stay home. We're okay. I, I think there was also like a real, like there was like, wait, you're rich. You know what I mean? Uh, like you see like, like, oh, I'm back at my parents' house now. And there's some palatial estate. And I was always. like, what the, wait, this yeah. is how you live? Like Kowal, like Kowal, be a guest on the show, and then he's in like f- huge fucking mansion. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. There's a fucking <laughs> grand piano behind him. Yeah. You're like, what the fuck? You know, what? I can Stand tell in people. the guest house. Guest house. <laughs> guest house. <laughs> <laughs> um, I uh, I always think like a, also a sign of a rich person because I, I usually can tell before because they don't have uh, there's a stress or a depression that's not in their eyes. Uh, yeah. Because they've never had to worry about money. It's right. a specific worry that if you've ever had to worry about money in your life, everybody has it. A little bit of like, a, uh, uh, don't let me lose a job, you know, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like rich people, they're always just like, they're always like kind of lighter because they don't have the money weight. Yeah. <laughs> the money weight. They have too much money weighted on them. <laughs> but, you know, I, I don't know. I just always thought that. I was like, it's funny. But yeah, it was a lot of like, yeah, the the COVID was weird. And you found out who couldn't be alone for one minute. Oh, sure. Yeah, oh, yeah. my God. I'm like, who, why are you calling? Into, like, we're okay. Like, just calm down. But yeah, I felt like that was my kind of time because I'm good at being alone. But so, you know what? Yeah. We kept the podcast going for you. The we listeners. did it for you. <laughs> we came in and kept the studios going, kept the studios open. <laughs> we were here wow. every week recording in person Breathing for on you. Each other. <laughs> we, we were forced- sharing food. <laughs> yeah. This we forced our engineers to come in. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you guys are grateful. I'm grateful. <laughs> I wonder how, what the the uh, that I wonder what that section of the podcast is like. I've told you this before, but like so many movies that I've watched, like uh, like I just forget everything about you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That I watched during the pandemic. There's like stuff, and I'm like, was I wonder how bad the pod? I mean, I'm sure it was really. It's bad. very bad normally. Yeah. So today's good. Today's a good one. I was hoping you would say something about it. <laughs> Today's a great one. Normally uh, bad. Normally but I, bad. But I, I think the, I think the, the, I think we were both just losing our minds. And I don't mm. know how much of that was like bubbling to the surface when we were recording, or how much of it was this was the one place where we could be normal. So it actually, if you uh. listen back to it, it, it just kind of sounds like a regular episode. I have no idea. I, yeah, I, I will same. never revisit it. I don't want to re-listen to re- relive twenty twenty again. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't know if I'll ever re- listen to any Doughboys episode ever. I've never <laughs> listened to a fucking to Doughboys uh-uh. episode no, ever in my yeah. life. Yeah, I had a podcast and I was like, I don't want to listen to this shit ever. I don't want to hear what I said. Yes. <laughs> um, but what, what did you guys record? So you recorded here or were you doing Zoom and stuff? No, we no, were no, doing, we're, we're, we're doing all of us. We're not oh, okay. coming I was like, like, yeah, like, you're really like, sounding like you were doing it here. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, why were you? Everybody else was on Zoom. Why didn't you just go on Zoom? <laughs> oh, yeah. But the, yeah, that was that whole period was weird. And then everybody was just trying to be like, can we still, should we do an improv show? Should we do a podcast? Right. Everybody uh, yeah. was cuckoo and yeah. just being like, we don't know what's happening. Yeah, it was a lot. I'm ready for COVID too. Bring it on. COVID two, <laughs> electric boogaloo. <laughs> what they call it? COVID two. More what's the what, Fast and Furious? Oh yeah, too. COVID uh, and, cur- and COVID <laughs> here. Started, well, it's dumber. Right? It anyway. was it was too fast, too furious. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Too co, too vid. <laughs> too- <laughs> Fun. <laughs> we'll probably get a January 6th, too. That's something to look forward to. Is, guys, all is. coming back. This is so fun. We're just going to do it again. Yeah, we just relived the last four years and again. let me tell you, right. I'm not missing this one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I, I want to ask before we get into Tender Green. How many stairs is it? I, I mean, not as many as you have. <laughs> <laughs> I, w- I want to talk generally about because I think Tender Greens fits into this bucket mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. like it's like a I think it's primarily like a work lunch place. Oh, big right, time. like that's yes. like the, people like there's an office order or something, or you're just trying to grab something that's like not going to weigh you down and you have an hour. Like that's like no one is like necessarily excited to go to Tender Greens. Right. It exists there to be like this is your healthy salad slash bowl slash sandwich sort of option when you are it trying got, to it got it got writer's roomed it got like writer room destroyed that's a big Absolutely. hollywood specific yeah so it would, it would but be... also like i mean this is even 10 years ago sure. it, like it was like tender greens got 
I was picking up Simpsons launch orders when it uh, this is this is pre uh, waiting for Duffman. Right. Um, so funny to me. Uh, <laughs> so funny. And I didn't realize you worked on this show, and then you're like, "Wait, did that happen? I was on that show. I worked on it." Um, <laughs> but I was. Yeah. I used to get tender greens all yeah. the time for yeah. lunch there, and I did think it was great. Yeah. For a while, it was it was a pain in the ass to pick up for lunch, but everything was a pain in the ass to pick up for lunch. But um, yeah. But. I used to fax in lunch orders. I don't know even they oh do that God. anymore. It's so wild. It's t- this is two. Th- this is also like two thousand and seven, eight, nine. You know what I mean? It's not that long ago. Um, it, it, but it, then you're like, wait, no, it's seventeen. I know. Years I was gonna ago. say it's almost twenty. Uh, yeah, 17. it's a fucking long time. It's a long ago. time. It's a long ago. time ago. Uh, I liked Tender Greens. They're the so one. I, the one in life. Culver City is the one that I would go to and and uh, get quite a bit, which I think mm. is the original. Yeah, and I I I liked it then, and I thought it was a good uh, for. To be healthy and have a good salad yes. for lunch, has it fallen off? Yes, we've talked about it. This how, how many times have we? Is it our third? This is review? only the second time we've done tender greens. This is only our second review. Yeah, and it's been it, it, again a, a long ass time. It was 2017 uh, when we reviewed it with Ryan Stanger. Mm. Um, so of the Action Boys, whose merch I'm wearing today from Kinship so Goods. Boys, I know they're everywhere. A lot of us boys boys in comedy. But no boy dogs. (laughs) 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 I I know, a lot of boys in comedy, you're right, that's true. (laughs) I got got a a boy and a girl cat, which is a nice, it's a nice balance. Yeah. Uh, So I want to ask, before we get into Tender Green specifically, generally speaking, if you're dealing with like the healthy lunch, the healthy dinner sort of option, like Mm -hmm. I'm going to get a meal out, but I'm not going to indulge, I'm going to, I don't want to feel like shit. Uh, like, 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 where do you, what are your go-tos for that? Like, what kind of place do you, do you go to? Or like, what kind of dish are you looking for? Are you looking for like a big salad or a bowl yeah. or whatever? Yeah, I feel like I'm, this is interesting about tender greens too. Yeah. I, I am very specific. I think I'm more specific. Like I don't, I never want anything like super heavy when I do eat out. So yeah, I, sure. I, I'm always like wanting a salad. And I also have this thing, I guess it's like, it's in the same like we- weird area as the sweet thing where I don't like bread very much. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Which is funny because they're really like Brit. Yeah, sure. But I don't know why. I think it's because it's kind of in, in the same. It's like a texture-y, but not really texture. It's more like I think it makes things like dry and more flavorless. And so like I like just meat, just uh, like lettuce, you know, just the basics of a salad or the basics of a sandwich. I never like care about all the stuff. Sure. So yeah, I always want to do something light. And so you're saying, where was I going? Or yeah, like like what's your, what's your go-to? I, sometimes yeah. I'll talk and I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> Why am I saying these words? Like, I really am such a brain foggy weirdo. Um, well, then it's funny that also our question is like, do you like sandwiches when yeah, you think exactly. back on the question? They're yeah, not yeah. very good questions. <laughs> <laughs> They're bad. No. We asked me where I'd go. Where I would go. I would go to Sweet Green probably. Sure. I mean, Tender Greens, I've very rarely gone to, but it's exactly when I want exactly arugula with like lettuce and olive oil and a steak. And I'm like, that sure. makes sense. I don't know why they, that's a restaurant, but I'm having it. Um, but like, that's tender or uh, sweet green, you know, just yeah. some junk, just some deli stuff or like chips. Like, honestly, like a lot of times lately, especially I've been eating like chips and candy for lunch. Wow. <laughs> I'll go no work protein, out. Just I'll, chips and candy? I'll go work out. Okay. I'll, take, I'll have a protein shake. Okay. And then like at four, I'm like, did I have lunch? And then I'm like, no, I want chips now. <laughs> So it's always like a snack. I'm a big snacker too. It's more okay. like more like the idea of you know that girl dinner stuff. Like that is how I already ate. So yeah, it's like that. So anywhere I can get like little bits and pieces and snacks, I'm into. Wow, I can't think of anything. I specific, like it, but that's my that's my jam. More I mean, of a, I'm more of a boy meal. Like boy that's meal. like I, I like eat like I like like a, a full meal. I don't like snacks. Yeah, you like know? a hearty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy meal. I guess that's not the antonym for girl dinner. Boy meal sounds strange. Boy I like a meal. boy meal. You know what I could go for right now? A boy meal. <laughs> Free Dan Schneider. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm more meals. Sense. I'm more meals than snacks. I don't Free. know. Yeah. Free Dan Schneider. <laughs> Free. <laughs> He's not arrested. <laughs> well, good. Hey, I'm, I'm happy. Hey, man. <laughs> where do you land? Where do you land with meals or snacks? I feel yeah. like I'm team meal. I'm I'm team meal. You yeah. know this. I'm I'm more of a meal guy. I I now for for I'm more of a meal guy. You yeah. get it. Yeah. Uh, I mean I don't dislike snacks, but I am I, I for a big guy. I really I don't snack too often. No, I don't feel like you do. And I also feel uh, like you're a guy who are like you know I'll, I'll, we we've been on the road together. I've 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 observed your habits. I feel like you're a guy who will have like have like two big meals in a day. Yeah. Right. And it's like and sometimes it'll be like. 
like kind of akin yeah. to what you were saying, but it'll be like four o'clock and you haven't eaten yet. Yeah, yeah. and then I'll do a big. I'll do a, a, that. That is more the way I'll do it. Right. And today it was just one of them. I hadn't eaten anything yet today. Uh, but uh, but I uh, for for me to to answer another part of this question, I used to be a tender greens guy yeah. and a. What was the farms one? Oh, Mendocino, Mendocino Farms. That's farms. another one. Yeah. Mendocino yeah. Farms. I I can't. My brain is mush. Uh, but, but those those two were like huge rotation, healthy, mm-hmm. but still I'm like satisfied with them. But I feel like both of them have fallen off. And in fact, mm-hmm. Wags, I'm gonna I'm gonna reveal something today. <gasps> there was a time where I was talking about how I got a paper towel in my salad. That's right. And we never revealed the place. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we did sense, but it was tender green. That's right. I got. I ordered a salad, and I was like, "This chicken is tough." And I put it in my mouth. It was a paper towel, uh, and that is. And even still, after the fact, yeah. I mean, it is truly disgusting. Yeah. After it's the- disgusting, but it's an, a kind of an understandable mistake. If it was like, uh, "Hey, I was using this to dry off produce or something like that," and I just like I fell into. I don't know. I mean, like it, it's to me, it's like. Paper towel in a salad it's is pretty gross. Me just giving like, oh, I wash my hands, but maybe you didn't clean them all the way. Oopsie, chicken in the, the chicken. Yeah, I that's guess if it came there. from a from like a bathroom paper towel. I think disgusting. I know exactly what it was. Is that there's that board there where they chop up the meat, and I think they oh. use a paper towel to wipe it down, and I think that that somehow got in my salad. I yeah, guess, which is also gnarly. That is disgusting. But it was tender greens. Now here's the thing. That was what eight years ago. Even that. it was sure. during the podcast, but it was like seven or eight years ago, um, which is depressing to hear that. Yeah, it's all depressing. Uh, uh, so, <laughs> so much ago. time. Um, long to be doing this. Seven or eight years ago, but but uh, but I never revealed it, and I'm saying it today because I gave Tender Greens a shot after that, and I actually did still get it consistently for a while. I've fallen off quite a bit, but the restaurant seems to have fallen off too, and then. When we went today, there is a lot of – it's very different than it once was as it yeah. was – It's. I yes. mean it's – the menu is wild. Well, that, this All is – All over the place. This yes. is part of why we revisited this uh, chain specifically because right now they are pushing a burger, mm-hmm. which is to me very out of character for what Tender Greens does. Yes. They have a burger – and we'll talk about that in a second. But but Nicole, before we get to that, like like okay, you're, you're maybe a bread skeptic, yeah. um, but you do like meat. Do you like yourself a burger? I do like a burger. I think a burger or any kind of uh, heavier meat yeah. is a rare, more rare thing. But like every time I get it, I'm like, oh yeah, like it's like hits, it hits. What do you like? What do you like on a burger? Or, or where do I you like had... on it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, pretty much the basics. You know, cheese wise, always American cheese for me. Oh yeah. Like American cheese just melts perfectly on a burger. It's delicious. It's buttery in this weird way. I think I don't know. Um, lettuce, you know, mustard, mayo. No ketchup, uh, 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 no tomato because it's too slidey. Yeah. Have you guys seen that meme where there's like a girl falling out of the car and they're like a tomato as soon as you put it on the sandwich and it's a girl falling out of the car? <laughs> <laughs> and she's wearing a red shirt, so it's even funny. I'll, I'll find it. In some <laughs> okay. uh, but uh, yeah, and uh, what else do I like? I like bacon. I uh, at at a Revolution when I worked there, we always had crazy burgers with like spinach, beets, goat cheese, eggs. Like I like, I kind of like it when it's like yeah, that yeah, too. Yeah. But that's a di- it has it depends on where you're going for a burger. Sure. Like there's so many different classes of burgers. Yeah. Some classes with burgers. But yeah, so like sometimes you want like a just a piece of shit. And so you yes. like go to like steak and shake. Do you guys have steak and shake here? So this is a whole thing. Yeah. We do have we did have steak and shake here. Uh as someone from this the Midwest, is... you probably have some uh, affection for it. Mm-hmm. Um mm-hmm. Steak Big and time. Shake was acquired in a hostile takeover by this guy, Sardar Biglari, Biglari. who is basically like a proto Trump, like he seems to be wanting to make himself into Trump. He also owns Maxim Magazine. I want to vote for him. He's and just not, he's never I want to running. vote for him. We want to <laughs> vote for him. He's just never going to run. Declared yet. He hasn't declared. But it's it's a whole thing. He bought so he bought Steak and Shake and bought he, Maxim, like you said. He bought Maxim Magazine. Maxim Magazine. I don't know if it still does, but for a time it had a like his name on the cover along with the title. And Maxim by Big Lari. By Big Lari, and then Steak and Shake. He when he started opening new Steak and Shakes, it said Steak and Shake, and then underneath in, in a different font said By Big Lari. So he's putting his name on everything. Mm-hmm. He uh he took the concept national and then completely gutted what was what people liked about it. Like yeah. like you know cuz the menu it's like it's got table service, yeah. they have things like spaghetti, you know. Yeah. He took all that shit out, made it a counter service restaurant where you order it in an iPad. 
Um, and then like it's it's the just, quality just, wasn't the quality there. was way worse. Yeah. And so all those that have opened out here, there's one in Santa Monica, there's there's one in Burbank. There were like hundreds that opened nationwide and then closed. Some that opened internationally and then also just closed. So he tried to overexpand and it was just total hubris. He like he did not catch what was great about the concept. Uh, are the old yeah. ones yeah. still just operating like normal? Basically? I would hope so. Yeah. I would hope they're kind of untouched because that's that was beautiful the charm of them. to think of that there's just the no- they they, yeah. they didn't even know about what was going on out here. Sorry for uh, monologuing at you but this is like a thing so are, are the we sometimes the, monologue at our guests we sometimes it just happens the, uh, the, 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 I'm just Evan. like this I'm chilling I'm like, I'm like, no I also like watching you talk I'm, not, I'm, I'm into it uh, uh, so you guys are smart I like it we reviewed this cha- like we revisited this chain like eight times yeah. because Evan Susser who is uh, the commissioner of the Doughboys uh, d- don't worry about that uh, I'm but not. He- <laughs> I'm not I was laughing because I was like I'm not going to ask about that that was my thought anyway keep going uh-huh. but he like comes to most of our meals I'm kind of surprised he didn't show up today maybe an indictment of tender greens honestly he comes to a lot of our meals. Hmm. He's a, he's from St. Louis. Did he know it was a Tender Greens burger? <laughs> he may not have. He may not have known. Uh, he he's he has a lot of affection for Tender Greens because he's from St. Louis, and so we reviewed it out here when it came out here, and he was just like, "This is this is ridiculous." They yeah. completely lost so is everything. From St. Louis? Was great about I thought he was from DC. He, he, I'm sorry. He's from he's from DC. He lived in St. Louis because he went to college there. He went to Washington. Yeah, yeah. Wait, Thank so you for the ten, correction. Tender Greens is a national chain. Tender Greens is not national. Okay. Um. The uh, Tender Greens was attempting to go national. They tried to expand to the East Coast, but now they're just in California. Okay, gotcha. okay. So it's it's just in SoCal in the Bay Area for the most part. Oh, I'm, I'm Texans. I'm Texans. Yeah. Yeah. Sus about your fuck up. Also, uh, this reminds me of there was this guy. <laughs> what? I'm, I'm, I'm texting the commissioner about his fuck up. I love it. Uh, there was an no, actor. I used to work at Steppenwolf Theater in Chicago, and there was oh, an yeah. actor that was like in the company, and we always kind of made fun of I mean, he was a lovely person. He's just yeah. like a little old dude, so it was like kind of cute. And he would just like come through the offices and be like, like looking for uh, <laughs> snacks and stuff. Yeah. And like you'd always get food from people and stuff. It just reminds me of that. Like, because you just said the guy comes to eat the meals. And that's yeah. it. That's what it sounds like. Is he just comes in and is like looking and then walks out. Like, <laughs> thanks guys. Commissioner out. <laughs> um, there was a term, our, our, uh, my, my, my buddy Alex Fearer, who's a, a big fan, a fan of the show, um, mm-hmm. but I had dinner with him and he told me a Yiddish term, a schnorrer. Which I guess is like the it's like exactly that kind mm-hmm. of guy. Someone who just comes around for the meals or something like that. I feel like didn't you say t- say that to Sus and he was like, yeah, he like didn't like he was like so so on it or something. He was something, like right? so so on it, and then yeah. I added that like, I think I think I then I was like, well, look, he also said that it was like a thing I could say about you, and then Sus was like, that's where I thought this was going, which yeah. was like. <laughs> Like, like, but then you said it was like in a lovable way, and then yeah. you liked that it was. In you a liked lovable. that I added that it was in a lovable way. I'll yeah. say this: I was with Sus this last. I was with Sus this last weekend on Saturday, and uh, this won't be much surprise to you, but we ate burgers. Um, <laughs> we were at the Red Lion, Fun. A, a great bar, mm-hmm. uh, to a birthday party you were invited to. I don't think you came. Uh, it was a late game. Uh, ooh, the playoffs. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Uh, we got a pretzel plate and a sausage plate, and then I was like. Uh, and it's a great bar, good f- German food. Yeah. Uh, and then we were eating the sausage plate and the and the pretzel. And I was like, "Are we gonna get a burger next door after this?" And he's like, "Yeah, absolutely." <laughs> we had burgers. Never say die afterwards. Fun. Ooh, is that place uh, is is that kind of like homemade vibes? Like, I feel like those burgers look. Are those the ones like, that look like that? They're like smash burgers. Smash yeah, burgers. Smash burgers. I, There's a Quincy connection like, there, and yeah. also it is like a it's like a, a, a it's like a. It's kind of it's very McDonald'sy in a way. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's it's, uh, it's very good. That's we what had a I good think time. Steak and Shake is. It's kind of like a smash burger. I think. I don't know. I just always think of that as like a diner burger, like when they're yes, like right. smushy and the cheese is kind of like smushed with them. You know. Some of them are very. Some, some smash burgers almost too thin, where you like yeah. almost need three patties for it to feel like right. beef. Yeah. It can come come across a little insubstantial. Mm-hmm. I got one last. I have a, one last thought. Yes. Mm-hmm. How do you eat your oysters? We didn't talk about that. We didn't talk about oysters. Like uh, uh Like raw? what's, what's well, well raw, like of course raw, uh-huh. but then also I know that there's grilled, <gasps> oh. but then also what's your topping? Okay, I choice? put the mignonette on it. That's, That's really fun. Same here. Yeah. Same oh, here. That, just the way you guys like respond to that made me feel so good. <laughs> like I said the right thing. Um, No, but yeah, I put the mignonette and then You did say the right. Oh, yes, if, you, if you said anything else, you would have been ejected from the studio. But if I was right, like, wives? I just yeah. sprinkle a little bit of sugar on it and be like, get it off. <laughs> uh, I wonder if we'll see a mignonette in Despicable Me 4. Ooh, hey. So far they've all been boys. I get it. I got Baby it. Baby Gru's got a new one. <laughs> yeah, I got it. He, I got it. I mean, he, Mignonette he is pretty out, good. Listen, Mignonette. <laughs> that was pretty good. That wasn't a retake. Mignonette. Uh, okay, Are you sure I... we don't want to make it a retake? <laughs> 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 yeah. 
do you want to just take it back or erase it maybe? Mini nut, mini nut. Yeah. I I I like a I I like vinegar. So it's a very yeah, sure. it's like a vinegar bait, right? It's like yeah. red wine vinegar. Yeah. Uh, and with onions in it, is that basically what it yeah, is? Yeah. But if they've got like the whole like this is the thing. If they got multiple sauces, I'm trying all the sauces. Yeah. Like sure, I'll have everything sure, at some sure, point. Sure. I'll but put I think a little that's... horseradish on it. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Horseradish lemon. with the with the what's the the red sauce uh, the uh, like a cocktail, like, cocktail sauce. sauce. Yeah. Cocktail sauce with the yeah, horseradish. Yeah. Um, I mini that is how I because I didn't like oysters when I was younger. My mom and sister were like slurping them down. I was like, this is gross. Yeah. And then mini net sauce is how I was like, oh, and you're not yeah. supposed to. You're just supposed to shoot them down. And yeah. I, it took me a while. I was until I was like a like late teens that yeah. I started to like oysters. Well, yeah. what you, I got into them. Yeah. Uh, I'm with you. Have oh, you always you. been into them, or were you, did you have to come? I think I think like I think no I think it's pretty I think it's fairly universal where like at first you're like kind of this is gross yeah. and I I don't want anything to do with this and then I came around on them I think when I finally yeah. tried them I was like oh, okay and then I had to get over the hurdle of because you'll sometimes get one that tastes a little off yeah, which yeah. is like a thing and then and then also um so you had to power past that but then also just like sand for some yes. people like the gristle of sand can be really off putting. Sure. But I, I don't really mind it that much. That's the one thing that makes me rethink it is when I get a little sand, I'm like, ooh, because it's also just like hurts your yeah, teeth. Yeah, and yeah. It's like, oh God, what is that? But yeah, I um I I feel like that's kind of it's kind of like I always wonder if I like oysters or I like the stuff you put on them. Yeah. Like, yeah. Because it's the yeah. same thing of when I put the mignonette on. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's perfect now. But I do think it's, I like oysters. Like, yeah, but I would just a never ocean, chew A little them. taste of the ocean. That's and that's what, what yeah. yeah. I like seafood just in general. Honestly, I'm pretty much a fan of any seafood, so... I'm I've, been, I've been way more. Yeah, I've been do. way more seafood this yeah. year, which has been, I think, only a good thing for That's me. Nice. I love seafood. Yeah, You're, we're both from the coast. We're both near the ocean. We should yeah. be opposite coasts, but it's true. Yeah, That's right. Um, it's true, Wags. It's it is, true. It is true, <laughs> Mitch. It's true. Mitch, you might be familiar with the game show Jeopardy. I am. We were a clue on it. We sure were. Mm -hmm. But have you ever heard of Jeopardy? Not until right now, Wags. Well, Mitch, HeadGum is putting on a live-streamed full-length version of this beloved segment from the HeadGum podcast on Thursday, June 13th at 4 p.m. Pacific, that is, 7 p.m. Eastern. And you know who's going to be there? The Doughboys! Wow! If you're listening to this on Thursday, June 13th, it's today. It's today! So imagine Jeopardy, but with borderline unanswerable questions about things only host Jeffrey James could care about. Things like celebrity real estate, contestants' personal history, phrases la like La Dolce Vita and more. Wow. And the Doughboys will be playing as a team against the Hollywood Handbook guys. Shit. Hopefully it's not real questions because they'll smoke us. <laughs> <laughs> us, Mike Mitchell and Nick Wagger, the Doughboys. That's right. We'll be there. Also be joined by Miles Bonsignor from Perfect Person, Amir Blumenfeld from Segments, and Riley Anspa from Review Review. What a crew wow. of HeadGum All-Stars. Get your tickets today at moment.co slash Jeopardy. It's only 10 bucks. That's wow. M-O-M-E-N-T dot C-O slash G-E-O-F-F-A-R-D-Y. That's right. If you're listening to this, you might think, Jeff, I know Jeff is spelled J-E-F-F. You're wrong. Yeah. G E O F F. It's one of those kinds oh, of. I know how Jeopardy is spelled is J E F F. No, you're no, wrong. No, you're wrong. You're wrong. You got it wrong again. It's G E O F F. Moment.co slash G E O F F A R D Y. You don't want to miss it. This is going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a blast. Tune in, you fools. Check it out live. Only 10 bucks. And if you do miss it live, the stream will be available to watch for seven days after the event. Perfect for Samira from The Ring. Yeah, it's just enough time. <laughs> Seven days. Mm -hmm. Hey, maybe there'll be a ring-related question on Jeopardy. There you're might find be. Out. If so, you're going to crush it. Thank you, Wags. <laughs> See you there. And you know what we don't have on the East Coast? Tender Greens. Tender Greens was, uh, as I mentioned, we reviewed it once before in 2017. Three forks all around. Um, it was founded mm. in 2006 by Eric Oberholzer in the Culver City, at uh, the Culver City location that's still standing, oh, was Oberholzer. the original. Mm. And he was someone who worked in just sort of hospitality generally and uh, decided to go off on his own. Apparently, he's now a $100 million business, which is crazy to think about. Tender Greens Yeah. Um, and it has around 30 locations only in California, uh, as I mentioned. And they released the Tender Greens Burger this year. A hundred so, million dollar business, only 30 locations. It doesn't seem possible. 
it's those pretty, numbers are pretty skewed. wild. Look, this, but I, this, I think they also do a lot of catering and stuff too. Well, before oh, yeah. the podcast started, this was a Golden Play Club place for me. I really liked Tender Greens at one point. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. it's declined a little bit. I yeah. think there used to be a thing like, and Nicole, I don't know if you remember this iteration of Tender Greens, but there used to be more of like a cafeteria sort of service. Like you'd go there and they kind they kind of ask you what you wanted up top, and they kind of be putting your plate together as you went down the line. Mm-hmm. And now it's much more of just like that's just an assembly line. Um, and I think most of their business is to go orders, but that even yeah. predates the the pandemic. Like they had already shifted to that. Oh yeah, I remember when they when they started the pandemic. I got a grocery box from there. I forgot about oh, that. Oh wow, yeah. So weird. I remember yeah. when people were doing that, right? And you pay like forty bucks or whatever, you get like some bananas and grapefruit in a box. Yeah, like a sack of flour. <laughs> How did we yeah. do that? <laughs> I, I don't remember why we did that because the grocery stores were open. Anyway, whatever. Who knows? We no one knew what to do. Was no the one thing. Knew what the hell. Um, I think also that was like some, there were some places where it was like, oh, this is a local I bakery. I, I knew what to do. You knew what to do? <laughs> you knew what to do, Mitch. I yeah, stayed I inside. Kate then fucking, it was kept it normal. <laughs> he was cuddling with cats, <laughs> chilling. Was cuddling with cats. <laughs> Making Doughboys on Zoom. He didn't care. <laughs> Watching some TV. That's what we did. The old saying, Wags, napping, <laughs> jacking, napping, crapping. Ah, jacking, napping, crapping. <laughs> It was originally you, you, yours. Originally was napping, uh, crapping, and fapping, which was That's a better rhyme. That's what Fapping, yeah. fapping, and it's such a great word that we don't use <laughs> enough. Great, it's a great fapping. word. I love that. I was, Why did you go there? Why are we talking about jacking <laughs> off? What? Oh, oh it's, it's like, human, well, dude. He's like, what, what am I, I, that's what I do at home. I don't know. Just tell me what I did at home. Things didn't change that much for me. That's all listen, I'm saying. Listen, I mean, for real, though, I was staying home. I was unemployed. I was like, this is not new. This is literally exactly what I was doing before. <laughs> so uh, I, I will say that the, the burger, which is a seasonal item, um, and I'm trying to bring up the description here. I had it in front of me. It, it, it's it's I got it on Friday and we we were having this this order that we ate at Headgum today. But I I mm. live near a a, a a Tender Greens, so I I got it in person. And I just wanted to experience what it was like, because um, you know sometimes a burger doesn't necessarily a burger and fries doesn't necessarily travel the best. Mm-hmm. So I feel like I got the best iteration of this burger, and I think the burger is okay. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, mm-hmm. is is this burger exciting? I don't know. What, what what did you think, Mitch? I think the burger is better than I thought it was going to be. It's better than I thought it was going to be. But I, but I also think it's like, is it that much better than okay? Or is it just at the okay threshold? I mean, why are they doing it is a big question. Is like, why are they, why are they, why is the burger on the menu? Um, but the bun is pretty good. I know you're not, I know you're not a bun, but that sesame seed, it, that yeah. sesame it seed good. bun. I do like the sesame seed bun. Yes. It's pretty good. The burger, the, the patty words. itself is decent. I think where the, where the big uh, issue with the burgers, and I don't even think it's bad because it is like tender greens has quality lettuce, Yeah. but the lettuce is pretty big and it's sliding around like those tomatoes a little bit. Falling out the uh, it's, and it's, it's falling, it's falling, it's falling out of the burger. Yeah. And, but that those to me were kind of the the bigger hurdle was the these yeah. big lettuce pieces that were sliding around. Um, yeah, it's just like a big, the, sl- big, big slab of like romaine, right? Is that what it is? It was like I don't, a, yeah, I don't know. Like it might have butter. Uh, yeah, maybe it yeah. is butter lettuce or butter lettuce. Butter I can't lettuce. tell what what it was, but but um, the the sauce was decent. The pickles were good. I, I have overall thoughts on the pickles. What's that? I have thoughts. On oh, the interesting. Pickles. Were too fan- were they too fancy? Disgusting. Wow. And okay. you know why I say this? And I think people will agree with me. They were bread and butter pickles. That's this is disgusting. The thing. This is the thing. Yeah, bread and butter pickles no. on the burger, no. I think were, yeah, I, I, I would have liked something a little bit more sour. They were too yeah. sweet. The So the, the burger, like it's it's a it's a beef patty, which is a blend of uh, chuck and hanger. It is uh, Monterey Jack cheese bistro sauce, which they don't describe, but it's like kind of like, it's an aioli. Mm-hmm. Um, lettuce pickles on a sesame a bun. Yes, I didn't know I was getting bread and butter pickles going in. Yeah. I just heard pickles and I assumed they were going to be dill pickles. I feel like you They're have to really warn sweet. people. You got to yeah. give them a trigger warning if you're going to give them bread and butter pickles. Yeah. Because that's just, I think those are the worst pickles. I'm a big pickle fan too, so mm-hmm. like I'm pretty sensitive to it. What, what's your, it's what's a mix your of, Do you say mix of chuck and what is it? Chuck hanger. and brisket or chuck hanger. and hanger. Yeah. Yeah. Those are like the those are like the characters I audition for, I feel like. <laughs> brisket and hanger. Chuck You're and like, hanger. Chuck and hanger. <laughs> read for Chuck and read yeah. for hanger. That's what I don't I'm know, saying. That, I feel like it was just Chuck is like, oh no. <laughs> um, that's hilarious. I wait, what were we just talking? Pickles? Yeah. Uh what kind of pickles do I like? Yeah. Okay, so uh oh god. 
so many thoughts. No, I, I okay. So if you're getting like cheap shitty pickles, I like like really the like almost neon green hamburger pickles. Sure, and they gotta. I feel like they should be on every hamburger because that's just what they're. They're so good and they're good on sandwiches. Mm -hmm. uh, like a McDonald's pickle, basically. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, like the ones in the jars at the grocery store, the cheap ones though. I just think when people try to do basic foods too nice, it gets kind of gross. They were sometimes. a little fancy. I enjoyed the pickles. I had no yeah. problem with them, but I but I get I I, I can get why people wouldn't like them. But I they yeah. are they were a little fancy tasting, a little sweet, but I I liked them. Yeah, also, sure. they weren't, I shouldn't say disgusting, because they did go well with the burger, I would say. But I would yeah. never eat bread and butter. I have a very <laughs> aversion to them. But, um, yeah, those are the, I like, like, half you sour don't like bread. pickles. I didn't like bread. I'll eat it, though. Like, I, I liked the bread on that one, on the burger. But bread, as bread half of bread and butter, butter pickles, I think is what Mitch was saying. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's what That I could like. be the issue. That's I, what I'm saying. Could be thing. But well, my thing is, it doesn't taste like bread nor butter. It doesn't. I don't know the etymology of bread and butter right? pickles. And yeah. it's not, it's not, it's sweet. I wonder what the sweetness is. That's my problem with it. It's, I, I agree with you that I think the, the those pickles were ill-suited for this burg. Yeah. I think they were too sweet. I think it had like, it had like a pungent character to it that just made me dislike the whole thing overall. Like with those bites when I was getting a lot of pickle, I was like, this feels unbalanced. Yeah. Um, I also will say, I asked the guy at Tender Grains, I said, have you tried the burger? Mm -hmm. And he said, um, he said, yeah, it's okay. His thought was the patty is too meatball-y. So yeah. I had that in my head of like, it kind of. No, I is, didn't. I disagree with that. I didn't. I don't agree with it either. But he was like that. That the way the patty is formed, uh, he thought it would work better as a, in a meatball sub form factor as opposed to like uh, a, a burger patty. So what a really did you tell him that you like do food stuff for a living? Is no. that I'm like why would he? That's such a specific thing to say. It's too meatbally. Yeah. Um. But I I actually did do kind of get it because I just thought the it was very thick. Uh, cooked to the max, which yes. I think gave it less. Uh, Soup, mine was super well done. Like yeah. the flavor, I thought the flavor was good because it's like a broiled tasting burger or something. But it was like, yeah, it was like smoky, but it was just too cooked, maybe. So that's maybe why he doesn't like it. Which is interesting. In my opinion, no nothing can be too meatbally. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's a bad thing. That's actually that's a great point. Meatballs are delicious. Yeah, meatballs are great. Like, what are we doing here? Why yeah. don't we want to eat meatballs all the time? But the, hey, that's the, that was the whale's downfall. That's so funny. <laughs> all he did was eat meatballs. The whale's all the time. downfall is, is Wags. Is, I don't know if What's you've seen the, the movie The Whale. Brendan oh, Fraser's no, whale. I didn't see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Watch yeah. it. His downfall. He ate meatballs. I guess his downfall is meatballs. It I guess. Kinda is. It's kind of the story of that. Everything about the whale seems like that's not a real movie, is it? And then he got I nominated mean, for an Oscar, so. No, it's, it's not a, only is it a real wrong. movie, it's the movie we talk about the most. <laughs> <laughs> We reverence the whale more than anything else, yeah. possibly. That's hilarious. He's a, here's a guy. That's a guy who was doing napping, crapping, and fapping. Yeah, no, it's basically his whole life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He probably did not notice pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that I I don't know if I'd go above three forks for the burger itself, right? Like, is that is that that's not a four fork? But considering you know, the breadth of uh, of quality of burgers that are out there, do you think that's that's above a three fork burger? Did I was just wondering if like COVID disrupted like the porn industry, which the whale would then notice, like, hey, like, where are the new I releases? Like, hey, I've seen this I one before. Where'd it go? <laughs> 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 Literally, that's when right. I get on podcasts and cameras Look, are for me, <laughs> you don't know. You don't know if that's a meatball sub he's holding, hey. or, if he, or if that's who knows what he's doing he's there. Doing <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, he is. He is. He is. Yeah. He is. No, he yeah. is. I wonder if COVID I mean, and we mean this sincerely. If you watch the whale, he jacks off and eats meatball subs for real in the opening five minutes. Yeah. Funny. Um, great movie. What's wrong with that? Great life? movie. Yeah. Why he seems so sad in the previews? Then he's living. Come on. That's what I'm saying. He's jacking a fap and eating. Come on. Fap and eat all day. What was it? Wait, what did you say? What was your question? He's talking about oh, three the, forks for the oh yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe more than three forks. Yes. I was gonna say three, but also I think that we have. Like, I feel like there's tiers of burgers. So it's like we should put it in a category and then rate it based off of those ones. You yeah, know what I mean? Like, I like not, that. Well, because it wasn't like a fancy, fancy. No, iceberg. no, no. It, like, it, like yeah. it, if you're it, from a taxonomical standpoint, I'm, I'm just trying to think of like where it lands yeah. in that burger hierarchy because it, it's like, it's kind of like the mid category of burger. Like, it's, it's like trying to be like a, an upscale burger, but it's not all the way of like the, like you go to a gastro pub or something, you're going to get yeah. a fancier burger that's going to be it's a not higher. That's, yeah. so that's not Oshibal. That's a, that's a burger king. And then way. there's, like, yeah, there's like the fine Did you dining burger. Or not? Uh, Do you say oh, burger king on purpose? Yeah. I just want to make sure. <laughs> that I said I liked it. <laughs> what's the one uh the the uh Ludo burger that's out here? What's the, I can't remember the name of the restaurant. 
Ludo Burger? No, Ludo is the chef. He's got like the, he's the French oh, chef who's got a, a yeah. petit toi. Oh, yes. Oh. Yeah, yeah, petit yeah, toi yeah, burger yeah. is like, that's what I think of as like the the the, the high-end like the, upscale You're thinking burger. of the Big Mac? The Big Mac, yeah. And mm. then that's like every element is, is elevated. Mm-hmm. It's like a fine dining chef. Um, it's not quite there. It's not on that level. I also am always kind of disappointed by those burgers, but like a, that a, one is awesome. Have you had it? I mean, it is good. Yeah. I, it is good, but it's just so rich. I mean, like that's, yeah, sure. That's, I I give this burger three and a half forks. I think it was better than I thought. That's fair. That's reasonable. I thought it was. I thought it was. I thought it was a decent for tender greens. It's it's too bad that this didn't exist back in the writers' room days. I guess there still is writers' rooms, kind yeah. of. Um. <laughs> What they they kind of exist. <laughs> That's um, what someone's saying. There's a few shows there's that a still exist. There's a few out there. Yeah. Um, but uh, Jeremy's looking at my hand. I know. Yeah, I just cute. saw it. Very um, cute. But uh, if this existed back then, I think that it would make some of those writers happy when I yeah, was like, sure. I'm going to Tender Greens because people will be mad. I think that there's a big – we'll get into more of Tender Greens, but – I don't know if they should be doing the burger. I don't know if it's helping their business. I have no idea. They're trying something. They're trying yeah. something. To me, it was just that there was a quality decline, and it happened like six, seven years ago. I don't know. I mean, around when I got the paper towel in my salad. Uh, but I thought when I went there, it's like, hey, it's slightly overpriced for salads, but I'm going to get a Chipotle barbecue chicken salad, and it's going to be really good. Mm-hmm. And then something happened where – the quality went downhill, and now I think they're trying to figure things out. And I, wh- whatever, I, I, I don't know. I, I just think it's that thing with with chains. There's like now, sweet green is the king of salads. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it will be for a while until people stop liking sweet green. And there's yep. a, a new one. Well, sweet green is also like so much bigger now. It's like, gigantic. It's, it's yeah. national. It's fully yeah. national. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They have like huge lines. People love sweet green. Um, when, I think, when Tender Greens was at its best, I liked it way more than I like Sweet Green. I still like it more than Sweet Green. I sure. will say, as like yeah. I think Sweet Green's quality level is maybe a little bit higher, but I I also just think like this is the, which is crazy because that wasn't that the wasn't case. always the case. Yeah, I can go and have a good time at Tender Greens. Like what you were talking about, I can get myself a plate with like a protein, uh, some greens, and some mashed potatoes, and yeah. I, I'm I'm like that's like kind of like a fun meal that's not that's not also like this crazy indulgence Absolutely. like you know what i mean yeah when i i remember when i was in the writers room cuz tender greens would never have i would never pick it like if they gave an option i mean oh. but it is nice because it's like they slice the steak cuz it's like the style i like to they slice the steak up uh snack style and it's just like at home that's exactly what i make a piece of meat arugula olive oil lemon and like parmesan that's yeah, it yeah. like it's just so it's simple and i like to eat like simply sometimes like that so that's why it works when yeah. it works. Yeah, and and so they have some more complicated things they've tried, and they've also that includes some of the other uh, things we got, which one of what which is a pasta dish they're doing now. I um, yeah, I ordered that N- Nana's pasta set. Right? Was it Nana's? It's pasta? Nana's pasta. It is tomato sauce, fusilli pasta, and grated pecorino cheese. And along with that, we also got a side of their mac and cheese, which is fusilli parmesan cheddar, mozzarella cheese, and breadcrumbs. What I'll say about this mac and cheese. You could have told me there was no cheese and I would have believed you. I thought it was just pretty flavorless. Am pretty I wrong? Pretty flavorless and kind of a dry guy. Yeah, kind of it a dry was, guy. He was a dry guy. Yeah, yeah that was a, a disappointment for sure. I feel like because yeah. that's one thing that like fast food restaurants can do really well. And I think because you can make it real shitty like mac yeah, and cheese. Yeah, for like, sure. Kentucky Fried Chicken has really good mess, uh, uh, mac and cheese and like restaurants like that where they're like super creamy and delicious. But yeah, it was dry. It was yeah. definitely dry and pretty flavorless. It's like they tried to elevate it, but they like lost the 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 core. You know, it, like, yeah. like 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 it was I, the Parmesan cheddar mozzarella cheese. Like I get it. You're, yeah. you're throwing three cheeses in there. But like the kind of. Uh, the sauce they ended up with, uh, whatever it is, it just it just didn't seem to come together. That was that was a disappointment for, yeah. sh- for sure. The mashed yeah. potatoes still. Uh, I know you tried some of them. Yeah. I got a side, of, a side of mashed potatoes. They were still pretty good. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if uh, if they, uh, you got those hot on a, like one one of those plates, I feel like it would still be decent. I I, I genuinely like their mashed potatoes. They yeah. didn't have any today, but that's like a go to for me if I go to mm-hmm. Tender Greens. And honestly, I'll also say maybe maybe I'll say this again in my wrap up, like. I probably go to Tender Greens at least twice a month still. Yeah. Like I, I don't I'm never I'm not like like thrilled to go to Tender Greens, but it's like a solid place I can go to uh where again I can I know I can get something that's not going to be a, a, extremely caloric. What did you think of that Nana's pasta? I mean, it was it's just a funny menu item. Like I was eating It was also it, huge. They give gigantic. you like a fucking chafing dish worth. Yeah, yeah. And that's their standard order. 
I don't know why it's on the menu. I, I it is confusing to me. It but it's not bad. I mean, it was like that to me was like a three out of five or something. It was very in the middle. Didn't that feel like a thing that like oh I, this would make sense if this was on the kids menu? For, but oh, this would this be on the regular menu? Like I don't quite understand what's doing there. There it, yeah. there is an option to get it on the kids menu. But okay. it, but it, there but it was also like it was one in the in the bowls uh, option. It was one. Of, it was one of those options. Which I know you got a bowl. I got a bowl. I got the California with Chipotle barbecue chicken bowl. Uh, roasted butternut squash salsa, cilantro, lime brown rice, cabbage slaw, queso fresco, pepitas, and uh, lime crema. That sounds good, was it not? It was fine. I mean, there, there you were talking about your your paper towel issue and, and what you thought that was a piece of yes, chicken. Yes, my, my paper towel issue. Yeah. I had a little like, bit trauma? of an issue. <laughs> I had a little trauma? bit of an issue with the paper towel being in my in my dish. Your paper towel situation. Your paper oh. towel memory. Yeah, yeah. My paper. My, yeah, the paper towel mishap by yeah, tender your paper greens. towel mishap. <laughs> yes. By yeah. what's that guy's name? By, by Big Larry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> tender greens mishap by that guy. <laughs> Uh, so so uh, there was a word that Emma used to describe oh, yeah. a bad piece of chicken you had there. That was gummy. Is that yeah. correct? Mm -hmm. You had a gummy piece of chicken yeah. in what was it on a plate? It, I used to get like they have like a fried chicken plate or southern fried chicken plate or something yeah. that I used to get all the time when I first moved to L.A. And I loved it. And then I got one that had like really gummy chicken. And I was mm -hmm. like, OK, maybe it's just a bad day. And then I got it a few more times and it was the same thing. So I don't know if they switched their chicken provider or what, but I kind of stopped ordering it. This is the issue this is the issue to me is like going into Tender Greens in 2007 2008. Of course, before they did before they got huge, but you would get you would see them chopping up chicken, you would see like this hot chicken, you'd see these hot mashed potatoes that are made yeah, in store. It's coming off the grill it's and coming they, off they, the they grill. got the fucking fork in it and they're carving it right there, you Yes, know? you're like, "Oh man, like there was there were chances sometimes that the chicken could be undercooked, which is right. bad." Yeah. But also it's that sort of thing of like, they could, "Oh, they are cooking, cooking it there on yeah. a grill." Now you don't see that Maybe. at all. You don't see a grill. I mean, like it, it like I, all I think of that. You, you could see the grill, but it's like they they're doing it a little the, bit well, higher at the, Culver, at the Culver City location. I feel like they're, they the grills are like in the back now, and other. It depends on the depends on the, the Glendale the one. You don't yeah, you're not seeing them there. grill stuff up or yeah. anything like that. But it just was like, oh look, those are fresh potatoes that were made fresh, and they're putting a spoon in it and mixing it, as opposed to like what we got today in a plastic container, and the top of it looks solid. I know it was delivered or whatever, but it's that sort of thing of like, this doesn't feel like freshly made mashed potatoes in restaurant. Right. It just it 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 feels different. Why? Well, I'm sure stuff is being back in the more. day. Yeah. I, much like the cowardly line, I get I get to tell you, let me at it, oh, let me at it. So good. <laughs> that's what I'd good. say. That's yeah. uh, that's what I'd want. And and but and, but now you know I. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> shit, that's fucking better. Yeah, no. <laughs> of course. Um, you shouldn't have been a crow. That's fucking ridiculous. I know, right? <laughs> they missed their opportunity. They, have they fucked up big hair. time. Look at this hair. It's lion hair. Come on. Uh, <laughs> But you know what? No. Maybe like the Tin Men, they got no heart. Oop. Wow. Well, you know what I was going to say, though? Actually, what, that, what you're making is, a, and I know I'm going to take it to the next level, but it's a big statement on, in general, just stuff. In yeah, general, yeah, yeah. right? Think about like the clothes. When you went to, you know, back in the day, clothes were made quality. They were made to last. They were made for a long time. And now everything's made for speed. Get it out as quickly as possible. Same with music. Same with entertainment. It, it's mm -hmm. not as much of a like, let's focus on the preparation of it, but like, let's make as much as we can of it. Yes. We've gotten ourselves to this point. It's our own fault. It's, yeah. it's, the it's a social is, failing. Yeah. yeah the it's, country is falling apart. It's, but I think it's also like on a this global November, scale. This November, things will change. <laughs> <laughs> RFK Jr. <laughs> <laughs> um the uh the th I think it's like a, like what you're just talking about like fast fashion I always think of like oh yeah I used to get clothes that lasted and now I feel like I get a shirt and it falls apart in a year yeah. certainly not anything from kinship goods our merchandise hey. partner uh but like I'll get something and it's like so cheaply made and they've just decided that it's it's it makes more economic sense uh, because we're only thinking those terms for them to make something that's super cheap and falls apart that you just throw out and get another one of, yeah. as opposed to something that's going to last, that even that you can repair, you know what I mean? That you could like uh, stitch up or something like that. It's just like, no, everything's so disposable now. It's yeah. like it's like it's like it's like everything is basically single use plastic. Uh, it's it, it's it's really it's a it's maddening. And yeah, that's that's certainly have been the case of the food supply. To watch to General watch quality has degraded. Yeah, to watch. Tender Greens transform is just like a part of it. And also Mendo feels kind yeah. of similar. 
uh, when I think of Mendocino Farms, sure. a place I also liked quite a bit. And here's here's like, a national mm-hmm. example. Here's a here's a one that that people have everywhere. I feel like Chipotle has gone through the same cycle, yeah. right? Yeah. Chipotle was a little yeah. better. 10 I think years people ago. asked for too many extra ingredients. I feel like that sounds like I'm joking. And I kind yeah. of am, but I feel like Chipotle lost their minds. They're like, we're done. We can't do this anymore. because you would see people <laughs> just piling on the cheese and the sour cream. They'd yeah. be like, more. And like, I feel like they were just like, we have to find the way to make this cheaper. So like, let's just give them shitty. It's no. it's yeah. it's that sort of thing of I think that it, it, I I agree with you I I think yeah. I think that that but I think it is a thing of all these people cash out to you know what I mean like like so many of these corporations they make a restaurant then the, the then some big company buys them and they cash out yeah which I guess you you can't blame business oh. owners for doing that yeah I didn't see if they, if this place is owned by private equity now I'm or whatever. sure a lot at of some them point are. there had to have had there must have been money that came into it and then they must have changed the way that they got their. I can't. I, I don't believe that it's the, the the same way it was when it started. I can't believe that. Yeah, but uh, maybe it is. Well, maybe cool. it is. It's Who knows? Cool. It's not cool, but it'll be interesting if you notice it. Like if it's that noticeable. Yeah, I, I, I'm trying to yeah. see if I can have any context of if there's been a transfer in ownership or whatever. But I, I will yeah. say that. So I did, I asked Emma because. When I was biting into my chicken, I thought of like this is gummy. Like I got to one piece and I was like, this is unpleasant in that same. And sort I think of way. gummy is yummy, of, but not in this case. Not in this, this not in this great. context. Yeah. He thinks sort gummy's of, not yummy. I think gummy's not mean? yummy. Wait, are like talking about candy or something? Yeah, he doesn't no. like gummy bears. I don't like gummies. Oh my god, that's my favorite kind of candy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. gummy's so, yummy. I'm on his team. Yeah, I'm team gummy. Yeah, I'm team. I, I'm team. I'm team. I was gonna try to say cool, but I I backed out. I know. I wanted you to. I was waiting for it. I was like, do it, Mitch. I'm seeing gum. <laughs> <laughs> yes! That's my dude. That's Mitch right there on the mic. He seemed gummy with me. <laughs> so I, I think the, the the other thing is with this bowl, and you, you run into this with bowls sometimes, is like there's so much stuff that it's that like there's so much of the cheap stuff. Like they just pile it in with like the rice to just sort of like make it feel like you're getting value for it, but it ends up being unbalanced. You're getting a lot of bites of just like dry rice. Yeah. And I, I don't know. It, it, I, I prefer their plates or their salads over their bowls, which I don't normally yeah. get, but I want to get something different. I still like that. Chipotle barbecue chicken salad, but it did just change over time where it was like these used to be like a well mixed salad that right. had I, I like just, just to be clear, I'm describing the bowl as I know, I know, I, 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 I know, yeah. I know you are. I'm saying, I'm, yeah. but I'm just saying this is uh, the bowl maybe is the way to go now, but then like you're saying, it I seems I don't know. I think that the salad's better balanced, but I think that this is the issue is that they did this weird thing where it's like you pick your protein and you do this. So now when you get the barbecue chicken salad it's so much more like hey we took the protein from here and we chop it up and we put it in your salad where when it started it was like this is a salad we're creating right you know what i mean where now it's like how would you like your protein do you want it in a Mm. plate or do you want it in a bowl or whatever and i think that it hasn't helped i guess yeah i just i feel like when i get that salad i'm like okay so here's some chopped up chicken here's a ton of lettuce and it doesn't feel like it was like a mixed chopped salad in any way uh, yeah. th- what do we uh, what do we think of the fries that came with the burger? Not great. They're kind of wedges. Mm-hmm. Wedges. We have wedgy wedgy potato fries. They're not. They weren't. They 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 weren't. They weren't great. I did not hate them, and I was surprised because I don't. I normally like like really thin fries, but yeah. I thought they were good. I like. I was like mm, not bad, and I like the flavor. Felt that felt the most homemade to me which is funny because it's like it wasn't that like amazing or anything yeah. but it was good to me when yeah. i got them on friday i was surprised I was like, that they had like a little bit more crispness than i like oh, they okay. looked like they were gonna yeah. be just chewy and maybe they yes. were today i don't know we they got an real- extra side of those for some reason did we order those i don't, I don't know we, I they don't just said just take these we don't want them. <laughs> 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 we gave up we make it pasta now we don't know <laughs> It's it is, true. But, it is confused. But it is, but it is. I really do think when a menu starts to do that, you're like, are you guys good? Like, are, why are you doing this? Yeah. Especially because they get successful doing a thing and then they're like, well, we can do it all. And it's like, no, you really can't. Yeah. <laughs> There's this slice place. There's this this uh, this pizza shop that's that's not bad um, that's, that's near where we live. But they started doing like a chicken sandwich, like a fried mm-hmm. chicken sandwich. And I'm just like, why are you doing this? Yeah. Like, even if you need to execute it well, you're a pizza place. Yeah. Like, you're a slice joint. Get, get get your house in order. Don't be expanding things that's like they're like outside of your domain. Yeah, because because even it's even identity it's well crisis. Executed, why so, exactly? It's identity say, crisis. It's so listen, confusing. If it's a midlife crisis, we get it. We're here for you, <laughs> and like yeah. we hope you get over it soon. But yeah, it's like what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I think with the yeah with the pizza, like it just it it feels to me like if they're gonna do something like that, they might as well just do like vegetarian meals that are more interesting or vegan right. meals that are more interesting, not like chicken sandwich. It's like what? Ugh, that's not doing anything. It's just this, free, whatever. Yeah, it's the sort of thing of it feels like everything in this in this world where you did a thing and you did yes. it well. If you kept up the quality, I think people would stick around. You but like yeah, you you try to expand or you try to make it bigger. You try to make things different. Why? Keep right. up that great quality, Wags. That's all you got to do. The places that – that's a great point, Mitch, because the places that endure are places that have like – they they know what they do and they stick to it. And they, mm. they just deliver that level of consistency over a long stretch of time. This goes back to the uh, – excuse me if I interrupt. The no, Kansas please. City barbecue idea where I was yeah. telling you like the shitty ones in the middle of nowhere, those are the spots. I mean, you know, there's great new restaurants obviously always. But yeah, I do agree like – it, it's like they could just stick with what they know and keep it going and then you'll be good. Like there's no need to, I don't know. Everybody just wants more money. It's yeah. all, it's capitalism. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. But no, it's too. a bummer. Yeah, it it's is. a bummer. It anyway, is. Um, subscribe for more content at uh, patreon.com slash doughboys. <laughs> And also, if you like the show, we're gonna start doing different and new stuff. We're gonna uh, we're gonna mix it up. Yeah, we'll just try. We're gonna try stuff. Yeah. So. <gasps> oh, you guys are joking. Okay, we're I was gonna... like, I was like, what? And then I'm like, oh wait, we just had a conversation. Oh, Nicole, Nicole, Mitch and Nick's horrible. pasta salad. You want to want a pasta salad? Do you want one? We'll, we'll, do, make we'll do it. it. We'll try it. What if this became a cooking show suddenly and you guys started making? It could be. Food? Want a, you want a you cooking want a, show? We'll, we'll make it a cooking show. What do you guys show? want? Give us twenty dollars. We'll do anything. Come on. You want I'm Mitch to marry Jemmy? Show. We'll we'll get them legally married. <laughs> They'll be husband and wife. And we'll go, dress up as the cowardly lion. <laughs> and we'll go all the way. <laughs> we will Jimmy eat run. your ass. <laughs> we'll eat your ass. He just comes back with double pink eye. <laughs> He's like, I did it for you. I did it for us. I went down on a dog. <laughs> oh, right. Okay, sure, sure. Who uh, knew this episode on Tender Greens would end up in bestiality? <laughs> That's where most of the episodes end, honestly. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> The the we didn't I would touch never on. Never do anything. No, dirty no, with Jemmy. You, baby. Sorry, that's out of Jemmy. She's like, what? that's inappropriate. <laughs> she's like, I was sleeping. Not okay. <laughs> she's so cute. We should touch on the 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 dessert we got, which was and, and unless there's any other food I missed, um, the pozole though. Oh, the pozole, that? yeah, yeah. I didn't have that, but I want to talk about it because I was like, what? They're making everything now. <laughs> Yeah, they yes. so they have a couple of soups and they recently added the pozole. I've had the pozole in store. Again, I eat this place like more than I realize. I know. And I didn't um, know that you I'm were here at all. I know. I'm like, oh. I think it's just because it's like it's it's sometimes like, oh, I'm getting a lunch out. You know, there's one at like the shopping center. The ones I'm at or whatever, near so. you probably I feel like are be- are probably better. The one on Sunset's closed. Oh, really? That's the only I one I've so. ever been to. Wow. I, I think I think so. Because that that used to be a high volume the location. One in Hollywood? Yeah. yeah. That's where the food came from today. Never mind. <laughs> they, move, they may be moved, but it was from Tender Greens Hollywood. The okay, so the desserts were uh, we got an apple cobbler, which I thought sucked. Cobbler, yeah. co- good cobblers I've had in my life have like a crumbly quality to it, which this one did not have at all. I don't just don't know what it was. Like, it felt like we had like a layer of pastry and then a layer of apple. It was with bad. Some some, uh, some ice cream on the side, but I was just like, how could you even call this a cobbler? Right? The cobbler sucks. Did you have it? I did. I had a little taste. I think what, what you're kind of describing, this is like the theme a little bit of tender greens, is like they put things on a plate, but they don't necessarily go together all that well. Yeah. Or like they didn't pick out the, you know, the best combos. Or like, so I think it's like they don't, they don't, they're not thinking it all the way through. Yeah. And the cobbler was like very, uh, yeah, to me it just tasted like a bowl of like mush kind of. It was like mushy yeah. too. I was extremely disappointed when you, you decided to uh, chop this up and split it up for us, which was a nice gesture. I figured I'd portion it out a little you, bit. Yeah, you, you, you were in your car, uh, your, your plut phase. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> One quarter portion. For all of us. Yes. And I was like, okay. Yeah. And then you just turned it into a big gloopy mess. But then I was looking at it, and I was like, this is going to taste like shit, but it's not Nick's fault. Thank uh, you, Mitch. You did a bad job, but it wasn't your fault. <laughs> he I'll was, take it. Get it. It was he, like as you were cutting through it, I was like, "That's very bready." Yeah, like yeah. a like a yeah. cake, but uh, uh, above the apples, and then it just it did not, it didn't work at all. Maybe I mean, like maybe if we had that thing, the hottest and freshest it was, yeah. it would be a different experience. But it was not good. I'm looking at their yeah. dessert menu. Uh, I got, uh, they have a chocolate chip cookie, a salted caramel cookie. I would hope those are good. I'd never get desserts from here. I bet they're good. Cookies I bet those are, are good. Cookies are easy ones. That's what I feel like they should be doing. Yes. I don't know if they need to be doing an apple cobbler 
or a, a, an olive oil cake. They also have a flourless chocolate cake and a carrot cupcake. See, they're trying to be like a nicer restaurant yeah. than they are, I think. I actually worked at a restaurant, like that small place place I was talking about did that, where it's like their pizzas were the best thing. Right. But then they always had to make these stupid like, oh, sea urchin, on that's that big on a spoon. And you're like, why are we doing this? Like, just be what you're, like, do the thing you're good at. And yeah. also, we don't need all the other stuff because it's just confusing. I was in line at 10 Greens Hollywood. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it's Hollywood, so there's some celebrities there. Yeah, sure. At Tender Greens? At, at, at Tender Greens. I mean, just in, in at Tender Greens Hollywood. Yeah. Just in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Popeye was in line. Yeah, sure. And he and he said, they said olive oil cake, He's and joking. he was so He's distraught. <laughs> you know, he was yeah, like, okay, oh. okay, okay, yeah, okay, okay, okay. That's how he makes? No, he was, he was so, he said, olive oil cake, and he said, no, 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 no relax. No, it's not, it's not it's your not wife. It's not made of your yeah. wife. It's, it's, a, it's a cake made with olive oil. And they yeah. gave him spinach, and he beat their ass. He's like, don't touch my wife. You will leave her alone. And then people, and, I mean, people were asking for pictures with me and him. They, yeah, they're like, hey, hey, can we get a picture of you with you and Bluto? Who's Bluto? Wait, Popeye's, Popeye's enemy. Okay. I'll show you a picture of him. Oh, now I have to see it because it's a reference to um, Oh, I love this. But honestly, you could have gone with, who's the hamburger guy? Wimpy? Like, you could have yeah. gone with Wimpy. I'll gladly pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today. I mean, I look. I kind of wish I looked like Pluto. He looks cool as hell. Oh, yeah, he's cool as hell. Yeah. Yeah. You, oh, you totally can do look that. like Pluto. You should wear that, that for is, Halloween. You do look like Pluto. Like I do kind of look like Pluto. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, like this is like, what the fuck, Wags? This is kind of <laughs> close to it. I am what I am. <laughs> he's such little teeny legs. Anyways, yeah, I saw Popeye at Tender Greens. Cool story. God, I really thought you were joking, and then no, I was like, a, yeah, that's no, such a specific reference, that would be really yeah. weird. <laughs> no, he like, did oh, it. It happened. Popeye. Did you see any one of your Tender Greens? I actually did. Okay, this is this is a weird... Oh, all right. This is... No, this is this is Hot not scoops. a bit. This is a this is a weird thing about that Tender Greens location. I uh, So there was an actor, Reggie Brown, who uh, used to be the Obama impersonator that Funny or Die would use when I worked yeah, there. Yeah, I remember him. And a uh, lovely man. And we went and got Tender Greens... Um, it was like me and him and 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 uh, like Alex Rickenback or someone. I remember who it was. We went. We got Tender Greens, and it was like just happened to be like the day after the 2012 election. It would have been right the Romney yeah. Obama election. Mm -hmm. And um, he does like look a lot like Obama. He's like an Obama impersonator. And so people were coming up and like congratulating him. But it was like, <laughs> no. but, it, but it was like a layer. It was like a layer of like they knew that he was. An, they could tell that he was an impressionist. So they were like, hey, oh. you know, like like uh, congrats on you're gonna get more work because Obama won again. It was it was a really strange like layer. And to were it. they like sorry for your loss? Did they think you were Romney? Yeah, they thought I was Romney. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> this was the, con the in person concession. Was on time and nailed it. They're together. You guys, are together. <laughs> you guys are together. You guys are together. We should get to our final thoughts on Tender Grains. Mm -hmm. uh, also, I saw Gru there from Despicable Me. That was, that was the other oh guy I saw there. You like Despicable Me? Huh? I, yeah, well, <laughs> I gotta watch those minions. Uh, you sure do. I gotta go see them again. Wait till, wait till you see the minionette. Um, <laughs> Ooh, Jemmy, Jemmy just left. Emma got Hi. up and Jemmy, when there was a like any chance for jemmy to not be with us yeah. it's good to know that she would take it immediately <laughs> she's so gone when when emma gets up Ruff, did bitch really want to marry me <laughs> no jemmy he was joking <laughs> she was outside. rough is it in <laughs> oh my gosh. Bitch. no <laughs> that was Emma's Whoa. gonna listen, edit this episode. She didn't hear that now because she sorry. left the room. She's gonna sorry. hear this sorry. later. Sorry. She's gonna know you said that. Emma, sorry, I love you. Sorry, <laughs> I didn't mean it. It's uh, sorry. Just kidding. And I love Jemmy. Just kidding. <laughs> I would never do that to any dog. <laughs> not only Jemmy, not to any dog. It's gonna be like really like a Chiron at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Mitchell would not fuck dogs. <laughs> Uh, all right. Uh, Jemmy asking if it's in that means that the there's a possibility it wasn't. Right. Yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah. No, you're right, Mitch. You have plausible deniability. She asked if it was in means it's close. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> That's as close as you need to be to it, sir. <laughs> this podcast. <laughs> yeah, sorry about this. Yeah, sorry. No, this is so fun. Hey, buddy, the whole team is here to tell you about the new hats we have, courtesy of our buddies over at Kinship Goods. Wow. 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 
Wow. Uh, now, you know, Emma's over there. She's wearing our classic Five Forks hat, which, oh, of yeah. course, is, remains in stock. Uh, Mitch, you got That's a new- That's Barktastic, says Jemmy. <laughs> <laughs> Jemmy has endorsed all these as Barktastic. Yes. Mitch, you are wearing the new beanie that we have. This is a Doughboys beanie with a red band, and it's got a gray top. I just realized I stole from Billy Madison. That's <laughs> quacktastic. Well, that's okay. It doesn't matter. Yeah, that's fine. It's fine. Uh, I'm wearing the beanie. We put it on me, a guy with a big head, to show that it works for you big-headed lugs out there. It's big. But I've been wearing that thing, too. I've been wearing it on my my, my normal-sized head. So oh. it, it fits all domes. Mm, yeah, mm -hmm. okay, normal-sized head. <laughs> Amelia, you got I got kind of a big big head. Amelia is wearing the our Doughboys black and white dad hat. If you just want, like, classic. a really classic, classic. Or reserved look. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just got the font on there. Um, and then I've got, well, what I've got on my own head is the gold snapback. So there you go. If you want more of that flat brim sort of thing. This is the kind of hat I like to wear, and now we offer it for our Doughboys fans. Yeah. All these hats are comfortable, they look good, they're barktastic. I think that if you're interested in them, you should grab them. Go ahead and grab them. You can order those, uh, as always, at birdfuck.com or direct at kinshipgoods.com slash doughboys. Amelia, what were you gonna say? Uh, nothing, I was gonna say, if you get the gold snapback, you can you know, get mustard all over it and nobody would even know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a great point. Ketchup on the beanie, mustard on the snapback, mm -hmm. you're That's covered. Right. And you don't have to be a dad to wear the dad hat either. That's true. That's true. I'm not a dad, and I'm wearing one right now. Hell That's yeah. That's not stolen valor. She can do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Blueberry compote on the Five Forks hat. There we go. And then, uh, what, strawberries and ketchup, gray milk? Blood. What? <laughs> yes, Blood. strawberries and gray milk. <laughs> All these hats are available now at birdfuck.com. Or, or direct at kinshipgoods.com slash doughboys. That's kinshipgoods.com slash doughboys. Get your new hats. Or birdpluck.com. Do it. So, Nicole, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to go around and say our, our closing argument, if you will, on this chain on Tender Greens, and then end by giving it uh, a score from zero to five forks. Uh, you're our guest. We'll begin with you. Your thoughts, your fork score out of five. I think for what it is, I want. I liked how you did three and a half because my reaction is to say three, but I wanted to go more towards the positive. So three and a half. Uh, I think that it's a good spot to get like a little bit of an elevated fast food lunch. Sure. Uh, I think they should pare down their menu to just be what they were before: protein and like a lettuce or like protein and a bread, whatever it is. Uh, and uh, yeah, you know, no bread and butter pickles ever, or else jail mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. that's my final thoughts i think yeah wow. and what's yeah. your score oh three and a half three and a half yeah okay. three, three and, and a half, half works that's wow. a good score good I'm score stick with that. yeah three and go ahead mitch it's funny because honestly i think that today was probably better than what we had last time we went here uh interesting i don't know i mean like it was a lot of for weird, the podcast it was a lot of weird different things today and i and i and look uh i think tender greens would be be doing better if they if they only had some consistency wags mm. that's what i think yeah i kind of half-assed the cowardly line i there. hoped you did i was gonna say something but i, just, uh, like, I lost the role in the last minute that happens they only uh, had whatever you just that's yeah that's, that that's thank you <laughs> that's if they only had some consistency if they had some heart i feel like they i feel like they feel like a confused chain oh i see what emma was doing <laughs> um, I feel I feel like they feel very. There's an identity crisis going on yeah. there, and I think if they were just, hey, this is what we do. It's simple, mm -hmm. and and maybe that didn't work at at a larger scale. You know what I mean? Maybe that was the issue. But still, then maybe it shouldn't be at a larger scale. But if they were doing what they did consistently, they had good chicken, they had good salads, they had good soups. Then there wouldn't be the need to do all these other things. Yeah, I. This is a former for me is a former Golden Plate Club. Uh, what, what you were, you were just uh, you were no, amused just, with Jemmy. <laughs> Jemmy doesn't know what you said when she was out of the room. It just <laughs> Emma doesn't either. Yeah. Emma doesn't either. <laughs> Jemmy, you don't want to know what they were saying about <laughs> you. Get off that chair. What? <laughs> I said, "Woof, is it in?" That's basically what I said. <laughs> You're like me where I always go into a room and I'm like, don't say the thing that you weren't going to say. And I always say it. I tell the person immediately. I just said this thing about you. Jemmy, I've seen Jemmy mount many dogs before, Ooh. like at, to assert her dominance. Jimmy. But she's nev I've never seen a dog mount her. So. Hell wow, yeah. Okay. That's my girl. Aww. 
That's my girl. Uh, She's no pillow princess. What you, is that what it is? What do you call it? <laughs> she does love pillows, so I do call her a pillow princess. But yeah. not like, like a literal one. Yeah. yeah. She's a beautiful dog. I love her. Yeah. Um, and uh, we're joking. We're like, joking. It's a comedy we're show. Joking. It's, it's a, a comedy joke. show. Do you want less jokes? We'll do less jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want. <laughs> I don't know if we could do much less jokes. Um, <laughs> Uh, Wags, this is tough for me. I like the three and a half score, honestly, because I that's what, but I think I might still just go with the score we gave it last time a, a, a three forker. You're sticking three, with three forks. Three. I, I, and this is a place I love it. Mm-hmm. was a four forker for me. Ah, three and a half is pretty good, though. I'm gonna go three and a half because I I go three and a half. This is this is this is uh for the potential of it. I want to yeah. go back to what it was. Yeah, I think that uh, I think that this was one of my favorite places to get a salad for lunch. It's one of my favorite lunch places for a long time, uh, but it it's seen better days. So. Yeah, hmm. I think I have to give this at least an extra fork or half fork for being a place that I will go to outside of the purview of this podcast, which is not the sure. case for a lot of no. places that we review here. That's yeah. true. This is a place that Fair I would point. just like, hey, you know what? Tender greens is there. I'll get tender greens, and I certainly can't say the same about like. Chuck E. Cheese, mm-hmm. just to pull out a random example. Yeah. You're so, going, but you're not eating. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, <get> <laughs> oh, I don't know. Kick me out. I don't need to be here anymore. I don't need to be here anymore. <laughs> but that does. I think that makes sense. It's yeah, like, it's more of a. It's a nice place to. It's not like a bad place. You would go there. To Ex- eat. Exactly. Yeah. Or, or like a. Uh, I'm trying, just trying to think of another example of like that sort of. Uh, like an unexcited, you know, mod pizza, which I th- is probably a place people have uh-huh. forgotten about now. That was like a complete, I almost forgot about it. It was a place we reviewed in recent memory. It's like an okay, uh, uh, you know, pie, whole pie place. Mod pizza. I actually genuinely, truly forgot what it was until just now. Yeah. Is it's it like, M-O-D? it's like MOD. MOD. It's like, it's like Blaze Pizza, right? Yes. And you can have yeah. them make it. You can have them make it. It's exactly yeah. like the same concept as Blaze or 800 Degrees. It's the same sort uh-huh. of thing. And it's just completely like well, this is a whatever place. And I think Tender Greens is better than that. I, I think the burger yeah. was was fine. Yeah, it probably was a little bit better than my expectations, which weren't particularly high. The pastas, they have no business doing. Um, some of the other stuff they're they're messing around with, I, just, I don't know why they're doing it. Yes, uh, that, that, that's the key point, Nicole, is just like they should they should stick to the plates and the salads because that's that's their that's what they do. That's their bread and butter, if you will. Mm. And um, mm. uh, uh, <laughs> whereas bread and butter pickles on their burger have no business being there. Jail. So, ah. I, I can't go below three forks, I don't, but I don't know if I can go as high as four forks. So maybe we're all in the hand holding club here, and I just line at three and a half forks. Wow. I think I think that's I think that's the appropriate score for tender greens. I think that's what this place deserves. Hand holding club, I love it. We're all yeah. the, we're, all, we're all on the same page. I, I I wish it. I wish it. I hope that tender greens gets back to its golden plate club roots, which is it never was in there officially. But to me, it was a golden plate club restaurant. You're thinking of like, I, and this is this is uh, the place I think of. And this is hard for people to fathom if they've had it in modern terms. Baja Fresh at a time was like a yeah. really, it was like akin to a poquito mas. I it was like it. a, it was like a wow. good quality good. Mexican place. It was like an elevated, uh, fast casual Mexican concept. And now it's sub Chipotle. It is like it is. They bought, got bought by Wendy's and then probably has been owned by two other private equity firms at this point. Mm. And the quality has just completely plummeted. It's a, it's, it's a bummer. bummer. Yeah. It's a bummer. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think Tender Greens has gone that far. I think Tender Greens is still good. And I yeah. think three and a half forks is a good score. Uh, so congrats to Tender Greens, even though you're still on the outside of the Golden Plate Club looking in. Hey, it's time for a segment. I got a mystery drink, and Mitch and Nicole must use their senses to guess what it is. It's the return of the Weiger Challenge. Wow. So. All right, here's, these are, the matching glasses are the same drink. Emma's uh, bringing this over. Number one. No so we alcohol. have, no there's alcohol. no there's no alcohol. Um, and uh, these no, are two do. different. <laughs> <laughs> mm. here's, Sorry. here's number two. I'll put it uh-huh. here. So Ooh. we have. So here's the thing. I I will say. Oh. Okay. Oh, Emma just gave Jimmy a kiss. Very sneaky. cute. These are two different varietals, two different flavors of the same brand. So if you can get the brand, uh, uh you'll get partial credit. But if you can get both drinks, uh, you'll get all the way there. We'll just see who can who can get the most things. Correct. All right, here we go. I'm going in. Wait, for are a we sip. racing or like wait, when do we answer? <laughs> we, you, you, whatever, whatever you want. Whatever you feel yeah. like it. It's 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 very uh. This is very scientific. Yeah. Uh, if you want to describe the color uh, of the of the beverage you have for audio listeners, kind of like burgundy, like wine color, cranberry color, maybe. 
Looks Ooh, like it's, it tastes like different than I thought it would. Mm. I mean, there's a bit of cranberry, grapey. Mm -hmm. there, there's there's some sort of like at first I was like, is this some sort of ocean spray product? Yeah, I thought I thought Welch's grape juice. Welch's at is first. great, yeah. but this is too. It's too clear and mm -hmm. light. I think for yeah. So it's got to be like a crayon, crayon grape. Uh, something else? You can you can taste test the other one and 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 maybe that'll guide you some. But I'm not saying anything uh, one way or the other on on what you just had. I don't have a good palate for drinks either. It's actually an interesting. It's like very challenging for me to taste different things in a drink. Ooh, that's very cranberry. Mitch mm -hmm. thinks he has it. I mean, I don't think I have it. Okay, okay. So what do we have? To, there are two flavors with brand. Two and flavors flavor? of the same brand, and then which flavors are they? Where, I think they are ocean spray, though. I think I think that they might be ocean spray. This just tastes like cranberry. What if it's like cranberry cocktail? What's like cranberry cocktail versus cranberry juice? I feel like one of them might be like one hundred, like ocean spray, one hundred uh -huh. calories or something. Oh, I don't think one hundred calories because I don't taste anything fake for, in it. For for one of them, one of them just tastes watered down or lighter to me. It's. I think this because this is just straight up cranberry. I think. I don't know. It's so weird to me though because it's. It doesn't it doesn't exactly taste like juice. So I am kind of it's strange to me. What if you just like peed in two glasses and you like taste it? <laughs> Sorry. I just I don't know where my brain is today. I'm like a if 14 year old boy on this podcast. Like, we have to have a whole different conversation. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> I said if your pee looks like that, there's a whole other conversation that needs to be it's had. Like beef, baby. <laughs> this is this is this is a tougher one. I'm still going with some sort of grape is in there. I know. And I guess cranberry, you got cranberry for me. I didn't know if I thought that. I think this is I think this is a cran grape. And I think that's a cranberry drink. I think, yeah, like cranberry <sighs> cocktail and like a cran grape. I feel like there's gonna be one more thing that we're missing, like peach or something in there randomly. And do you wanna do, do we wanna guess a brand? More sips are being taken. More contemplative sips. Our contestants ponder what brand these beverages. That is a tart. be cranberry. The second one is very tart. Yes, and it doesn't feel like ocean spray to me. But I am stumped. Why? You, this is a good one. You stumped mm -hmm. us. But if it's like one hundred percent cranberry juice versus cranberry juice that they just sell with all the sugar in it, that's why it would taste so tangy. So, and I think they sell both. That's why I say that. Ooh, what if it's like? What are other juice brands? <laughs> What's the one that says apple juice? They don't do other brands. Mots. Do yeah, Mots. Mots. I thought Welsh's is a good. Was a good. I think I'm gonna go. I am gonna go Ocean Spray just because I'm yes. out of. I'm out of. I'm out of ideas, and I'd say that one of those is maybe a, a hundred, like the hundred calorie one, and I'm gonna say one is cranberry and one is uh, cran grape, but I don't really know. This would be the uh, hundred calorie, I think, if it was one. I think. Yeah, the one that's more cranberry-ish. And then this is, I think, cran grape, too. And I think I think Ocean Spray, Yeah, I can't think of any other brand that would have things like this. So, yeah. It is Ocean Spray. It is cran grape. <gasps> wow. Yeah! And the other one, Nicole, you were going here earlier, so I think I'm still going to give it to you. Okay. The other one is Cranberry Cocktail. Yeah. It is not Cranberry 100. Oh, so it... Is the juice? It's just the it. regular cranberry juice. Yeah, it's mm. not like a hundred calorie version. I guess cranberry juice is really uh, not sweet at all. So this is has some sweet in it. That's yes. Why. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. This is a good one. I'm kind of mad. <laughs> Do that. Well, I, I mean, I just think this was more of a tie personally. Wow. I can give it as a tie. I mean, look, I said the one hundred thing. You were collaborating. You did say the one hundred. I said the one hundred thing, which maybe was just was I, I didn't know how tricky you were trying to get. It's crazy that it was ocean spray. Yeah. No, you got you both got ocean spray. You both got cran grape. Cran uh, maybe maybe it is kind of a tie. I think it. I'll, I'll give you it. It's a tie. Yeah, but more accurately, Nicole, you have won the Weiger challenge. But Congrats. it's like how we, we were giving like three and a half stars. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm the half star, which is like <laughs> that's the extra that wins. You know, <laughs> that's fair. That is yeah. fair. Okay. Look, the guest should Fairly. win anyways. Yeah, tie goes no, to the I'm guest. Gonna, I'd be happy to lose, but no, I think it's a tie. Well, Enough you're on the tie. podcast. You lost in. <laughs> 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 that was the Weiger Challenge, just like a restaurant via your feedback. Let's open the feedback. And hey, we actually have a voicemail today, Emma, if we want to play this. Hey, Doughboys. Uh, this is Jake from Denver. Um, just reaching out with a question uh, as I'm making my morning smoothie. What frozen fruit loses the most 
by being in the freezer. Wow. Mm. Uh, thanks so much, guys. Really appreciate all the great content and uh, Burger Brigade for life. Thanks. Wow. Fucking dork. Um, <laughs> thanks, Jake. I just improvised with Jake from State Farm. Whoa, that's cool. Last week. What was he like? Yeah, he did monologues. He, kinda... he was oh, nice. Yeah. yeah, he was a nice, nice dude. He was, yeah. he was good. He wow. was good. Um, Weird life those people might have, must have. Yeah. I feel yeah. like the like I, spokespeople. Yeah. I feel like they 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 must be good with. I'm sure they get paid well. I feel like it has oh, to yeah. be. A, I think you reach a certain threshold, and yeah, you're finally able. To, you used to be able to, as as you all know, used to be able to make like a, a decent living as a commercial actor, and now it's at the point where like you have to be, you know, the Jake. face of a brand in order to do that. You know? uh-huh. Flow. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. But God bless them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, God bless. Very very talented, Seriously. funny people. Um. All right, so fr- so a fruit that loses the most by being in the freezer. I mean, I, I, I mean, loses I, I, the I, most I, like flavor or nutrients so. or, or flavor probably. I have, That's an answer, my guess. I have an answer for it, but it is my favorite fruit. Yeah. Oh, I don't know if the people are going to get mad. At me. I feel like the answer is probably the ones that are like melon or like kind of like lightly flavored yep. fruit. Yeah. Is sure. that when you freeze them, then like it's like you lose that light flavor? But to me, I'm like I love pineapple, and then if a pineapple's frozen and then blended into a drink, it's not as good to me or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Sure. But I'm probably now leaning more towards like melon or 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 you know like something like that cantaloupe because if you freeze those, what the hell is the point, right? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, because I don't freeze a lot of fruit, and I will sometimes. I have bought like a bag of frozen berries sometimes with the idea of making a smoothie, but I'm never like and excited about those either. But then I guess I guess probably people think berries are something that freezes better, right? Because it's lower moisture content. Do you know what doesn't work for me is frozen. Gra- you know, people are like frozen grapes are like good. I used to like those. I don't, they don't really work for me. Don't, the the, the, the yeah. frozen grapes don't really work for me. As well. I they I did used to like those cubes in wine. Oh, yeah, that's that's, I've been doing that with like other that. frozen fruits and sparkling water. It's nice. Yeah, that's, that's fun. That's fun. I think it's berries maintain because I'm. I, I feel like he's also talking about like frozen bags of fruit you buy, maybe. Yes, right. right yeah. And so, like when I think of that and making a smoothie, I think like I kind of feel like strawberries lose like the, mm. the good, the niceness of the flavor. Sure, they sure. Still yeah. taste like strawberries, but there's something missing to me. But like blueberries are good. Like most berries do maintain their their flavor. You know what? What? I might not like frozen fruit that I don't much. Like frozen fruit. I don't think I do either. I don't, I don't do it. I just like uh, uh, Jake. Cut up some fresh fruit, put it in your smoothie, yeah, and put, I agree. you'll feel better. But yeah, I like uh like frozen bananas. I used to try to put in smoothies, oh, but not like not like ones I froze, but I bought them in the package. So gross to yeah. me. To me, yeah. Oh man, a so, frozen banana maybe is. I mean, but those work in smoothies. They're good. Yeah, those in work. smoothies, yeah. and they take over the flavor, so they they don't lose their flavor. I feel yeah. like, but. uh Self Magazine has an article, Six Fruits and Vegetables You Shouldn't Freeze. Number one is melon. Yes. This includes yeah, cantaloupe, totally watermelon, you honeydew, and the like. I won. I won the I, won I won the, the wire challenge. challenge. <laughs> uh, <laughs> potatoes, tomatoes, cucumber, celery, <laughs> salad greens. Why would I ever freeze salad oh, greens? No, I just be, I froze spinach once, though. I think you do stupid shit when you think trying to save money or trying to like I don't know. I live alone, so I'm always like storing yeah, sure. stuff, right? Right, right. But I tried to freeze spinach once. It was bad. It did not work because I thought that I can put it in a smoothie. Mm-mm. Oranges, I would not think to freeze, Ew. but that, those apparently don't work. I was going to say orange is a weird one. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't want to do I feel that. Like any citrus. So it's just like, yeah, any citrus would be I feel bad. Like lemons, Wine, limes, lemons, grapefruit. What are you laughing yeah. at from grapefruit. Self Magazine? No, this is from Delish.com. The article <laughs> okay. is 40 foods, 40 foods you should never put in the freezer. And some of these are just like, they just assume that the whoever's reading this is a fucking idiot. <laughs> they had to come up yeah. at 40, Nick. What do you expect? <laughs> coffee. Like, yeah, I'm not going to freeze a fucking cup of coffee. Yeah. Shit, it's, it's not hot anymore. You can freeze coffee beans. You can freeze coffee, coffee beans, yeah. yeah. Fried food. Ew. Like, uh, we're going to get a basket of fried chicken in the <laughs> freezer? Whole eggs. Mm. Whole eggs? People try to freeze I guess yeah, so. I went to a botanical gardens like a couple weeks ago and they had a rock that had a piece of tape on it and said, do not take rock. <laughs> so y'all, they got to tell some people these things. Yeah, we're dumb. We're uh, dumb. I like Soup? this. I like this one. Canned goods. Canned, just in general. <laughs> I was told you can't even put those in the fridge. Is that true? Like the can in the fridge. Yeah, I don't think you're supposed to. I never knew if that was like, true or not, but I just don't do it because of that. Any other good ones? 
Um, What's this? Jello, champagne. Jello? Wouldn't that be kind of good? Yeah, I think mm. Jello could maybe work, but maybe. Uh, who knows? Maybe it wasn't for you. Sir. Yeah, popcorn kernels. Champagne. Who's putting a bottle of champagne, champagne in their freezer. freezer, blowing it up? Yeah. Who's putting popcorn kernels in the freezer? <laughs> I don't know. You're like, I don't know who's doing this. It's like cryotherapy. <laughs> You're like, oh, a new way to pop. <laughs> 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 like, just pop the candy in a regular way. <laughs> uh, I get maybe in Denver, I would think you'd have access to a lot of fresh produce in Denver. I know in some colder climates, it's like, you know, you got to freeze stuff because otherwise you just don't have, a, 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 you know, fruit or, or you got to freeze or can stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know. Um, yeah, Jake, uh, I think melon's the answer. But yeah, also, uh, you know, eat fresh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. Eat fresh. Eat fresh. Eat fresh. As Jared Fogel told us, eat yeah. fresh. <laughs> He's a good guy. He's a good guy. Look him up. <laughs> You don't know him? You gotta look him up. He's a good guy. He's out there on the picket line uh, for Dan Schneider. <laughs> if you have a question or comment about the world of chain restaurants, you can email us at feedback at birdfuck.com or leave us a voicemail at 830-GOTO. That's 830-463-6844. And to get the Doughboys Double, our weekly bonus episode, plus our entire pre-2018 back catalog, subscribe at patreon.com slash doughboys. Our producer is Emmer Erdbrink. Our associate producer is Amelia Marino. Our engineer is Casey Donahue. And our video editor is Mike Dorfman. Our guest, Nicole Thurman. What a treat. Thank you so much for being here. This was so treat. fun. Thank you a for treat. having me. This was really fun. We had a I had blast. a great time. What a hoot. And it was fun eating with you, too. Aw. Thanks for having me over for lunch. Anytime. Wow. What yeah. a nice thing to say. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anything you would like to plug? Honestly, no. Um, no, I have like social media. <laughs> I'm not doing any work right now. Yeah. But um, you can follow me on social media, uh, Nicole Thurman. It's N I C C O L E Thurman. And then um, uh, Twitter, I guess. That's it. <laughs> that extra C has got to be like. Does does anyone ever get that right? Like, do you ever like you ever get like a cup of coffee and they actually write the extra C Never on it? Never on cup happens. of coffee, yeah, but yeah. like yeah, like uh, I had somebody. Oh god, but sometimes people will spell it so weird, like N I C H H O L E, and I'm like, what is happening? There's no Who H in there. Write it like that because yeah. <laughs> some people put an H in Nicole, yeah, yeah, yeah. which already to me looks horrible. But then yeah, <laughs> they're like, I know there's a double letter somewhere. I'm like, yeah, but like, why would it be H? <laughs> I mean, C, C seems arbitrary, but it seems better than H to me. But yeah, nobody ever gets it right but wow. it's it, and even if i like write an email i'll have my name spelled and even if they have a strange name a lot of times they'll spell my name wrong it's okay though my mom she wanted to be unique well i like it listen i'm not mad i like it too it. <laughs> but yeah follow me nicole Thurman. Thanks, so, thanks so much for being here what a hoot yeah. and hey that'll do it for this episode of doughboys and until next time for the spoon man mike mitchell i'm nick weiger happy eating see ya want to dress like the doughboys Get all your favorite Doughboys merch at doughboys.kinshipgoods.com. Sources for the intro are in the episode description. That was a HeadGum Podcast.